and welcome to Citywide Sports Park here from the Forest City on a bit of a muggy and rainy Saturday afternoon. It's the 0-3 GTA Grizzlies visiting your 2-1 London Beefeaters in OFC action. I'm John Urban, joined by Matt Schneider. Coach, thanks for joining me here today for some Beefeaters action. Pumped to be here. I'd say it's a lovely day for football, but it's definitely not a lovely day. But we're fall weather and you know, any day with football is a good day for me. So. I'm happy to be here and watch some great OFC football. The Grizzlies are looking to get back on the right track after starting off this season 0-3, coming off of a tough 31-20 loss to the Quinty Skyhawks. History was made in that game, coach, but unfortunately it was for the other side. It's the first ever victory in Quinty Skyhawks history. Yeah, on paper, uh, two teams probably going in different directions, but you never know. It's, OFC football is uh, it's a unique level of football because you have different you know, age groups, different players from all different backgrounds. So we're going to play the game today and we're going to find a winner and a loser at the end of it, hopefully. Ironically though, coach, both teams coming off of a loss. The beef beaters, well, 29-22 and a heartbreaker to the St. Clair Fratman. Even though Cody McRoberts did his job with an INT and taking it all the way 60 yards back for a major, it ended up being Fratman quarterback Michael Beal hitting Brendan McCraney for a 78-yard dagger, which is 36 clicks left in the fourth quarter in a game that was tied 22 all. I, I think as a former beef feeder player, I think it's safe to assume that at some point London will see St. Clair again and probably a third time before the season's over with. Those two teams always end up finding each other when the games matter. And what's with the rivalry between Windsor and London? It seems like you could be playing foosball and it'll break into a brawl. Yeah, if you had two old women playing bridge and one was from London and one was from <laughs> Windsor, that game, that bridge game would get intense because Windsor and London, a lot of respect, but a lot of hatred as well. So you see the captains and officials lining up at midfield. It looks like the GTA Grizzlies are gonna receive the pigskin to start off the Saturday afternoon action. They're on the right side of the ledger in those Toronto Argo-esque uniforms. And then of course, the beef eaters rocking the red with the blue numbering and the silver buckets. Yeah, just watching GTA warm up for the last couple minutes, I would expect to see them come out and try to throw the ball a little bit early. Early, they, they look like they have a quarterback that they trust. They've been throwing it in the warm-ups, and I think you'll see a little bit of a CFL-style offense from both teams, and it should be exciting football. And the Grizzlies have improved slightly, slowly, but surely over the season when you think that they lost 63-1 to in the opening game of the season against the St. Clair Bradman. They only did a little bit better by a safety, 41-3, to when they lost at Hamilton, although that game was in Brantford, ironically enough. And then, like I mentioned, that 31-20 loss to the Quincy Skyhawks. But that's when Brandon Awusu had a monster game for the GTA Grizzlies. 112 yards, two touchdowns on 19 carries. It does appear like we are heading off to the national anthem here at Citywide Sports Park. It is the GTA Grizzlies visiting your London Beat Feeders in OFC action week five of CJFL action. If you're joining us from the rest of the nation, we'll be back after this break. And welcome back to Citywide Sports Park here in the Forest City, home to the London Beef Eaters as they'll be taking on the GTA Grizzlies here in some OFC action. Once again, it's Johnny Urban joined by Matt Snyder. Happy to dig into some pigskin action and believe it or not, you got to go back 742 days, Matt. The last time these two teams hooked it up 
It was a 56 to three drubbing by the Beef Eaters taking place back on September 15th of 2019. That was at TD Stadium. Clark McCallum, the starting quarterback for the Beef Eaters, was the backup in that game to then starter Jake Powell. He, in mop-up time, still went three of six, 42 yards, and a touchdown. Taz Vang Bell, 44 yards, and a TD on seven rushes. Spencer Foster, 55 yards, one touchdown and two catches on the Beef Feeder side. The DTA Grizzlies, Gagan Baines, their hunter and kicker with the lone field goal to break the goose egg. That's one thing I'll say. GTA historically hasn't necessarily won a whole lot of games. They don't seem to ever be shut out though. They want some respect on their name. Yeah, they're definitely a program that improves as the year goes on. They draw from a huge region, so they may have some issues early in the year getting their players together, but once the season starts and they and they get their guys together, you can definitely tell their athleticism comes out. And they're a team that'll definitely get better every game. Matthew Stackhouse ready to boot the pigskin away for the London Beef Eaters. Awaiting the ball, looks like Brandon Owusu. No, I apologize, that's actually number 12, Keon Russell. Back there to receive this Stackhouse kick. It's Beef Eaters, Grizzlies, it's right now on Beefs TV. The pigskin takes a couple bounces, a fortuitous one. This might go out of the back of the end zone, coach. And wow, the most Canadian play in all of football, less than a second into the contest. It's a rouge. The Beef Eaters chose, I don't know if they chose, but they, they ended up kicking the ball a little bit lower. It's funny, I was watching the Notre Dame-Wisconsin game today and Wisconsin kicked off with the same technique. It might be the weather affecting the kickers, but the GTA return did a good job taking the single and playing the field position game. Sometimes in that situation, players will panic and want to work a return. The worst thing you can do is start the ball in your first drive of the game on your five or six yard line. So GTA will start with good field position. Have you ever seen a game start like that before? With a kickoff in the end zone? It, it, only when I've had a good kicker. <laughs> and as you were just mentioning, Coach, off of a squib kick, no less. There are gusts of wind, but they're actually coming from the western direction, which necessarily wouldn't help put any more muscle on the ball. But yet, here's the first offensive play of the game for the GTA Grizzlies. It's a pitch to the right side. This looks like a dose of limb, and limb, well, will be stymied for about a yard or two. Old Londoners will recognize the formation the GTA lined up in to start the game. The old double wing offense that the South Lions used to run back in the, the days of, of Coach Marcus. It's a, an offense that's dedicated to running the ball. We'll see if GTA sticks with it or if this is just a change of pace for them. Despite the 112 yards from Brandon Awusu on the run game last week against the Skyhawks, the Grizzlies' leading rusher was that gentleman right there, David Lim. Unfortunately, not adding to his total with a second and 10 coming up here. 120 rushing yards and a touchdown on 26 carries coming into this game. So back at the helm is the quarterback, Alex Purvis. A 35% passer goes to the air this time. Unfortunately, I think the wind might have caught that ball in the midair and it didn't hit the initial target. Yeah, GTA lined up in the same type of formation, that tight double winged formation. Uh, took a shot with their one-on-one -on -one to the, the wide receiver, the only receiver they have out there, and incomplete, they'll punt the ball in second, third and long. Just 15 degrees here at kickoff in London, but fortuitous enough, it was supposed to rain all day. It only rained on our producer, Adam Melrose, and his crew while they were setting up all the equipment. And then, well, the rain tapered off and we get some clear weather for some football action. Yeah, if London can field this cleanly, they should start the game with some good field position and you know, likely get the ball inside their 40 going in. So this would be a good opportunity for London to start the game strong. The man that got the only points on the board 742 days ago in Gagan Baines will be back to punt this one away roughly from around his own 20 yard line. He handles the snap. Remember, London's blocked a couple of these, but this one will get away cleanly. Take a couple bounces down to the 40-yard line. Back the other way for the Beefs. It's Nick McKenzie, and the Beef Eaters will get their offense onto the field for the first time with a 1-0 lead. Tough, tough punt for uh, GTA. A little bit of a low one. London fielded it cleanly. Whenever you're returning kicks, especially in, in adverse weather, the number one thing you want to come away with is possession of the ball. Second thing is work your return. So London will start off just shy of the, of the 45. Clark McCallum will lead the helm. Uh, he's 28 of 56 passing so far this season. That's good for 50%. 422 passing yards and five touchdowns. Coach, he won't play the same amount of games in 2019 where he threw 11 daggers to the end zone and over 1,250 yards in the process. So McCallum will send Lenny in motion to the line. GTA blitzing. 
actually, I apologize. Out of the helm, it's Devin Smith. Smith is going to rumble all the way in front of the GTA oh, bench. So, yeah, ironically well. enough, personnel change right off the hop for Good Gavin Lake and the Beef Eater crew. Yeah, London First went to an empty eight. formation and ran a quarterback draw. GTA reacted to the formation by spreading out. Uh, opened a, a big lane for the quarterback, Smith, to escape through it and get a huge gain on first down. Great call to start the game with the empty formation. So maybe a, a little West Coast style offense here because I see McCalum and the dual threat out there as well in Devin Smith. Watch the two receivers to the near side, including Connor DePodesta, as he'll run to the line and join his teammate in Nick McKenzie. This one's fired to the near side. Those two will lead the blocking scheme. Mitch Spence will get around a couple down the near sidelines, and they're gonna say eventually squeezed out of bounds around the 20 yard line. Yeah, that little four by one formation swing pass to uh, Spence, I would call that more of a player's play than a scheme play. That's just a play where we say, hey, we want to get the ball to this guy because he's really good and let him do what he's good at. Beef Eaters again are your defending OFC champions after winning the 2019 dance. And unfortunately, the 2020 season was for naught because of the pandemic. The GTA Grizzlies, by the way, they finished two and seven back in 2019. They had 114 points forward but unfortunately 300 points against was their detriment. So once again, McCalum near the red zone actually appears to just hand this one off, a bulldozer style run. We've seen that in his high school days, LJ Dyer with the carry. Yeah, what I'm noticing early from London is a lot of pre-snap motion moving guys around. On that run play, they added in one of their slots trying to create a numbers advantage inside the box and it resulted in a big gain. They were able to get a double team on the front side and Dyer got a, a nice gain on first down. Yeah, and now they are in the red zone, coach, and I want to talk about the benefit of a bye week, especially coming off of your first loss of the season. How does that benefit Gavin Lake and his coaching staff? You know, usually your, your, a lot of your, up, uh, your growth as a team will come between your first and second and third games in that short range, so having a bye week early allows you to fix some of the mistakes that are evident and, and come back with some re like rejuvenation. You get rested and then you get, you know, you get to go into the season with a great streak of games. You don't have to worry about that week seven bye week when you have a lot of momentum. L.J. Dyer, I thought he might have crossed the goal Dyer, line, but according to the middle. officials, just two yards LJ shy. Dyer. But again, coach, you can tell they're sniffing out that end zone early. Yeah, L.J. Dyer is a player that I have a lot of familiarity with. I've coached him for a long time, and he's a tough inside runner. Uh, he's an honest runner. He's not going to give you a lot of outside stuff, but he will. He'll bang the ball hard in between the tackles and get his pads down. You know how like some players will exchange jerseys after the game? They're always tattered and beaten and worn down. LJ Dyers is that after two plays of action for the Beef Eaters. So Michaela looking to cap off this early drive with a major. Looks like GTA is blitzing. There's a flag on the play. Dyer towards the end zone. They're going to say he's shy for now, and Dyer we'll see the what the carry. officials say right on the penalty mark. LJ Dyer at the end of that run, taking some of that good high school coaching he got and throwing his you know, <laughs> double triangles over the ball to protect it in the pile. Don't break your arm there, coach. Because once again, I'm happy okay. that you're joining us here on our Saturday okay. afternoon. And the GTA First Grizzlies fans, here. hopefully joining us from the GTA region online. Thank you for joining us as well. GTA joining the league back in 2014, still looking for their first winning season in the OFC. Actually hailing from the Etobicoke region of the GTA to be more exact. London is throwing a lot, of, a lot of different personnel packages. They just went from their five receiver package to a two back package to back to their five receiver package. A lot of formations, a lot of motions, throwing a ton at GTA early. We'll see if GTA's defense is able to respond to the different packages and looks they're getting. Seems like a lot to digest for a team that's, well, again, trying to bend, not break here on the Beef Eaters opening drive of the ball game. Yeah, it's definitely a good strategy. Uh, you know, a Gavin Lake coach team is going to have a lot of different personnel packages in with his CFL experience and they're throwing a lot of looks early at GTA. The penalty does not help GTA though. It's now first and goal from the one yard line for the Beef Eaters. So plenty of, well, matches to potentially light the first touchdown on the board. Michaela takes the snap, fakes it to Dyer, throws it to the near side, incomplete pass will bring up second goal. Pass Just a little play action there and trying to work that backside one on one. And uh, looks like the receiver got tripped up. Could be a pass interference on the play. So again, uh, defensively speaking, GTA is led by Josh Amador coming into this game with a team high 10 tackles. But to kind of put that into some perspective for you, coach, 
Cody McRoberts had nine tackles in that 29 to 22 loss to the St. Clair Frat. Something I'm just noticing, amateur football, both teams on the same side of the bench. There's London no is way down, right down at the far end away from their bench. Having a little trouble getting the signals in. I always had trouble with that as a quarterback. I realized it was because I had terrible eyesight. I couldn't see the coaches. But uh, we'll see if there's any communication issues at this point, especially with the loud generators in the background. Yeah, we'll explain that story in just a minute if you're peculiar about that background noise. But where there's a will, there's an Adam Melrose, folks. As there's Clark McHale. I'm trying to get GTA to bounce, but did he throw his own team offside? Yeah, it looks like they might have been working a hard counter or like an on-two situation. I'm not sure the advantage of going on two on your five-yard line. Best case, you gain you're on the half worst case you lose five so blended will back up with the penalty and it'll be facing second and goal from probably around the seven yard line it seemed to me like the beef eaters sprinted from midfield right into the red zone and now that they're breathing on the goal mouth of the gta grizzlies they can't punch it home yeah they've gone to their spread look it looks like they're going to try to throw the ball and now they're committed to throwing the ball in second and goal from the seven we'll see what kind of bro combination they come up with so it looks like procedure London. So to your point, they'll back up five yards. But to my point, maybe that'll benefit them to have some breathing room. Gives you a little bit more space to run some of your routes. You might not have a lot of routes designed for the two yard line. Although with the 20 yard end zone in Canada, you do have that advantage of having space deep in the end zone. We'll, we'll see what Coach Lake dials up here on second and goal. I mentioned the wind gust coming from the western direction up to 25 kilometers an hour right now in the Forest City. That seems to be playing a little bit of a factor right now as McCallum sends three to the line. Takes the handoff to Dyer, flips this one to the end zone. Easy peasy touchdown, Beef Eaters. Mitchell Spence. London went three receivers into the boundary, which is a fancy word co coaches use for short side of the field. GTA came out in what we would call a cover zero look, man to man, no safety help. And basically, London just said, hey, we're going to throw the ball on a double move to our best receiver. And the receiver won the contest. So one on one, receiver and DB, receiver won, and London's up 6 0. With the early rouge, would you debate going for two here? You know what? I'm not really an analytics guy. I never was a math student, but <laughs> I, I'm the kind of guy that says, let's just keep it simple, especially early. I'd probably kick the single here, but uh, smarter guys than me would disagree. So they are going to go for the conventional PAT. The hold is good, and so is the kick. And just like that, with 9.54 remaining in the opening quarter of the game, it's 8 nothing for the home squad over the visiting GTA Grizzlies. 8 nothing is a great start to the game. Definitely different schools of thought. Obviously, all the analytics that are coming around the last couple years of sports, a lot of people would say you want to go for two in that situation. The other school of thought is people say you don't want to chase points early in the game. Just take your points when you can and kind of worry about the two-point conversions in the fourth quarter. This is the lone OFC game here today. There is three Canada West games going on in the CGFL. Tomorrow, the St. Clair Fratman will be visiting those Quinty Skyhawks at Loyalist College with a 4 p.m. kickoff. Quinty looking to kind of, well, dwell on some history after picking up their first ever win in franchise history last week. Yeah, I think it was a big deal for that program to you know, decide they want to move up to the junior ranks. They've run a successful summer league program at the JV and varsity levels the last couple of years. They were able to get a very established, well-known uh, well coach and Coach Goldie there. And wishing them the best of luck as the season goes on. I think they'll do great things. They have great leadership in place at their program and a, a good head coach to take them into the future. But remember, too, not playing in 2021 when they did in 2019 in this league were the Niagara Regional Raiders, who finished 1-7, and, and the Ottawa Sooners, who finished 2-6. and six. Again, I believe the Sooners have taken a hiatus. I don't know if the Raiders will return. So once again, it is Stackhouse ready to boot this one away. And actually, I apologize. I think that was actually 81 on the boot. That would be Leo Centino. Anyways, the returner for the GTA Grizzlies muscles his way up right in front of his bench, and I believe it is LJ Dyer in on some of the tackling action. Yeah, a good return from GTA. Uh, they'll start the ball just over the 30. We'll see if they can get the offense going. I expect to see them come out in that double-winged offense again. They got to establish the run if that's the offensive direction they want to go in, or it could be a long day for GTA. It's interesting. We haven't seen the OFC Offensive Player of the Week, Brennan Owusu, again in that 31-20 loss to the Skyhawks. Really carried the load though for the Grizzlies, 112 yards, two touchdowns on 19 carries. We saw a dose of David Lim in that opening drive who came into this game with 120 rushing yards. So the quarterback at Purvis lined right up behind the center. No, actually I have to apologize again. That's Ryan Boyd. So Ryan Boyd now, the quarterback. So both head coaches in Kravitsky and Lake throwing this play-by-play -play guy off his game. 
this could be a situation where GTA's had some you know, roster one. changes over the last few weeks because of all the changes nine. with the rules in the league, and, and they're scrambling to find a way to get an offense going. This offense is unique. It's a great offense. It's not really, uh, I wouldn't say it leans towards three down football. If you're looking to see some great pass defense from London, you might be disappointed today. I wouldn't expect to see a lot of wide open point from GTA based on what they're showing so far. The best season in GTA Grizzlies history was 2016. They finished three and five that year and had 95 points forward. In fact, that was better than the Beef Eaters who finished two and six. On the pitch play, it's a double pitch, but regardless, a plethora of Beef Eaters come in and make them pay. Yeah, I was, I'm not sure what GTA was trying to accomplish there, if they had some kind of a pitch pass going or like a reverse situation, but London sniffed it out. At, from what I'm seeing at field level, London's D-line is just, you know, really controlling the pace of play so far. Yeah, Jordan Fletcher, the Basset Hound, as you mentioned, that just sniffing it out. He had a team record four sacks in the opening game of the season that was right here on Beast TV in that 24-10 victory over the Hamilton Hurricane. Yeah, he's actually an American player. I think he was one of the first two American players that they were able to sign when the rules changed. He's come up here from, if I remember correctly, Connecticut. Correct. I think he's trying to get some exposure to this Canadian game for looking for an opportunity to get some CFL tryouts at some point. So far, I like what I see, and I think a lot of people will definitely like no what they see out of him. Play. And he's making a transition from American sport to a Canadian-based game look easy. It's not. Yeah, that yard, that yard does make a difference for the D linemen. They don't really like it when they come up from the States. But he, so far, the yard hasn't been a problem for Jordan Fletcher. He'll be the second punt of the game for Baines. Once again, watch out for Cody McRoberts. He's had a couple block punts this season, including one back in the opening contest against the Hurricanes with Kazati rumbling it back to the end zone. You know what? GTA might have recognized Baines. the analytics or stats behind that because they go, wait a minute. We'll just play the field positioning battle. A safety concedes two time more time points on the board. I asked Coach Scarpelli, the special teams coordinator for London, what was your secret to getting all these, you know, punt pressures and punt blocks this year? He said, well, it's really simple. I take my six fastest guys and I tell them to rush after the punter. So London <laughs> so far has looked pretty good <laughs> offensively. They're showing a lot of diversity, different formations, a lot of motion, a couple different personnel packages. GTA's lined up in that same double tight, double wing formation, trying to establish the run, having trouble. It's 10 nothing early in the first quarter. We'll see if this game gets out of hand early. And not to be too dramatic about it, but it does seem like the GTA Grizzlies have put a bit of a tourniquet, if you will, on the wound. They're not bleeding out fast like we saw in that 56-3 drubbing 742 days ago. Uh, they're kind of with the safety and the rouge conceded. They, they, they're limiting the damage. This this could be a, one of those situations where it's death by a thousand cuts if they can't get the offense going. Because from what I've seen so far, London's offense coming out of the bye week is looking very crisp, very efficient. And you mentioned the passing pregame. We thought we'd see more of that, but unfortunately after the first incomplete pass of the game, we haven't really seen any more aerial assaults by the visitors. Purvis, the quarterback, coming into this game, 6 of 17 passing, 46 yards, no touchdowns. That's 35% passing. We see another squibber on the carpet, Coach. This one's going to be picked up in a hurry. I believe that's Taz Fang Bell. Rumble, young man, rumble down the far sideline, skipping out of bounds around the 50-yard line on London's side of the turf. Yeah, the London, one of the upbacks in London had the ball right in front of him. He decided to pass it off to Taz Vang Bell, which is always a great decision. Getting the ball in Taz Vang Bell's hands is a good thing for you as a football player. So he gets the ball, he gets a good return. He's a player that I would look to see London try to get the ball in his hands in the next couple drives. Yeah, as I mentioned before, seven rushes, 44 yards, and a touchdown in that game. In the last altercation against the Grizzlies, I don't know how much you take away from a game that was two years and 10 years or 10 days ago to the date. A lot of things have changed in the last two years, but you're a married thing, man. One thing that hasn't changed when Taz Bang Bell touches the football, good things happen for your offense. So McCallum goes back out there with four weapons to the near side of the field. He's going to hand this one off though. Do we get another taste of LJ Dyer? Yes, Dyer. we do. And it's oh, a five yard no. game. Yeah, London working their oh, RPO oh, game oh, out oh, there. Oh, they had a screen to the oh, wide oh, side of the field oh, set up oh, and a run inside. The quarterback oh, makes the decision based on the numbers. Hands the ball off to Dyer, and Dyer plunges ahead for a good game, second and five. We saw the Western Mustangs, those back-to-back -back Vanier Cup trip years with Chris Merchant at the helm. A lot of that RPO, a lot of that option out. Yeah, that was one of the things that they were really getting into, you know, when I was down there, the RPO game. It's definitely, as the game's changing, that's where the direction of the offense is going, you know. I think teams are starting to expand on it, and as they get comfortable with it, you see more and more teams using it in their offense. McCallum goes back to the gun, but once again, it's another ground attack. Why not? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And once again, moving the chains this time is Vang Bell. 
when you have an offensive line that is big and strong like London, you have the depth at running back that they do, and you're able to run the ball, your whole offense opens up, and it becomes so much easier as a play caller because you can do anything you want when the run game's working. But still, Matt, man the torpedoes. I want to see him take a dagger down the field. As a football coach, when you're running the ball and running it well, it's it's pretty easy to get real boring and just keep calling the same runs because football coaches by nature are conservative fellows. Well, like I said, especially if you know they can't stop it, why would you try anything else? We see just two make that three run to the line, but you know what, GTA, well, they didn't time that one right. The leading tackler in Josh Amador was well pretty much breathing on McCallum's neck by the time he had snapped the pigskin. Yeah, one thing I'm really liking from London, and we've mentioned it before, is the variety of motions and formations of the throwing a GTA, adding in slots into the run game, game, trying to get a numbers advantage. Five, Very effective on five, offense so far. Years. A lot of Canadian CFL uh, type influence you know, being shown from Coach, coach uh, Gavin Lake. Beef eaters so far They're coming into this contest, 110 up. points forward. Yeah, Defensively, 53 points given up and though. The uh, whereas time. the Grizzlies on the flip side of the equation, just 24 points forward. Again, 20 of those coming in the loss to the Quinty Skyhawks last week and 135 points against. It goes back to my comment earlier. It seems like they're kind of limiting the damage here early in the first quarter against this offensive powerhouse in London. Yeah, the one thing I'll say about GTA so far is they're down, but they haven't given up. They're still playing really hard. I give them credit. Balls for the loose! On the ball. Balls loose! Bang Bell fumbled the ball, but we'll see who recovers it. I love this. Teams That's from both jerseys pointing in the opposite direction. The zebra separating the pile of humanity. GTA celebrating. It's Grizzlies ball. Yeah, de oh, great change of, of, of uh, you know, momentum there. This would be a good opportunity for GTA if they ha wanted to bring out their spread package. Now might be a good time to do it. If they were going to get back in the game, this is kind of where it starts as an offense. Get, get a turnover, get a couple first downs, see if you can get back on the board. And does it have to be a little more conventional? We saw sort of that double flip pass, and I mean, Fletcher read it from jump, and I think he could have got credit for two tackles on one play. Yeah, so far, uh, GTA's come out, they're tight, double-winged offense, trying to run the ball, haven't had some success. I don't know offensively what their limitations are, but this might be a situation where you want to try to mix it up, see if you had another package in your back pocket to pull out. Just about five and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. Thanks for joining us here on Beast TV. It's Matt Snyder, joined by yours truly, Johnny Urban, uh, as once again... Uh Looks like this is going absolutely nowhere. Once a ball came loose at the very end, coming out with it was a beef beater and Nick Samus, but the officials are saying, no, oh, we think the whistle went. Really, I, I don't know what to call that play. Just a massive humanity. It looked like the old wedge blocking play from the Rumble's GTA team. Nick Samus has to be careful too, out of frustration, just sort of split the, the ball river. towards the official. We've seen players do far less than get punished for. One of the things London's shown the last couple of weeks is they're definitely an emotional team. They have taken some penalties. You know, when you get penalties like that, guys are celebrating emotional. You want to encourage the emotion. It brings the best of your team, but you want to obviously have that discipline and know when the kind of the line is there and walk away before you get that flag. Could that be coming from their head coach who has Razor Ramon as his profile picture on social media? Yeah, maybe. So once again, it's the GTA Grizzlies going back to work on the ground attack. They're going to try and rumble this one right up the middle. And I mentioned it earlier, Coach, maybe more of a conventional method used on this particular drive, but unfortunately it still brings up a third down. Yeah, we'll see where the balls get spotted. I'm, I'm having a tough with the angle here, but it might, might be a little too far for them to go for it this early in the game. Ball third be placed at the 45-yard line means that they need five yards for the first down. Uh, given where they are at this juncture of the game, do you gamble here or do you go back to the special teams? Uh, I think... What I've seen so far, maybe give your defense one more chance to see if you can get a stop and turn the field over before you start to gamble. What you don't want to do is give Lennon a short field and be down 17 nothing this early. So once again, Baines this time again will attempt his second punt. Last time ended up taking a knee back in the end zone to concede the safety. So once again, in a 10 nothing game, we'll see the second punt attempt of the game from the Grizzlies. This one, a beautiful one, set right in front of the beef feeders bench. Coming back the other way with a head of steam is Nick McKenzie. McKenzie trying to stretch the field out. Squeezes through a tackle, gets clipped from behind. Sort of a, a vicious collision there, if you will, with Five Adam down. DiCarlo. Yeah, I thought Jacob Carpet from GTA did a great job turning that return back I into all his help, uh, setting the, the edge punter. there. The punter from GTA, I didn't catch his number, but he did a great job getting it off when London definitely had a block on there. I think he knew that the block was coming and did a good job getting a, a nice deep punt 
in the face of pressure, Lennon with a good return. So put yourself in the position, though, of Kurbitsky, the head coach of the GTA Grizzlies. You're here on the road. Next week, by the way, they'll have their bye week, and then they play, guess who? The London Beef Feeders. That'll be at Centennial Stadium on October 10th. So once again, don't think about tomorrow. Think about the right now. What do you do to try and put the cleat on the other foot? I think I would probably try to, if you had any kind of passing game in your pocket, maybe the next opportunity on offense would be the chance when you want to start to throw the ball a little bit, see if you can start to move the ball through the air because obviously the run game hasn't had the success you might have hoped for. Defensively, they actually haven't played that bad. They got a good stop on the first drive before the penalty gave Leonard first down. But uh, we'll see if GTA can kind of bounce back with some offense here. They just need to get a couple first downs and want to get themselves in confidence. Put the ball down at the 55-yard line. That's where the GTA Grizzlies will have this first and 10. Or no, I thought London going back out with the offense. Oh, so yeah, GTA's on offense. We were a little confused there for a second. Looks like there's a penalty on the play and, and GTA got a first down because of it. I didn't catch the penalty uh, signal, but it could have been too many men on the field. With the second and third and fourth situation, a five yard too many men on the field penalty for London would have given GTA the first down there. So, GTA. Up six. Well, contacted the kicker, which is another five yard penalty, got him a first down. So, hey, things are looking up for London or for GTA. They get a first down. This is a situation where they might be able to get something going here. We saw this against the Hurricanes. The Beef Eaters got an early lead in the opening half, but again, penalties that developed in the opening half of the game continued in the second half. and. Although the Hurricanes still fell by 14 points, it really felt like in the fourth quarter they still had a chance. Why? Because of those pesky orange flags. Yeah, the reality is if you're a team that wants to pressure the punter, you're going to get some penalties. It's just kind of the nature of the beast. you got to live with it. Hopefully try to limit it to the situations that aren't going to hurt you the most. But if you want to live by the sword, you, you got to die, die by, by the, the sword. Bullet. Sometimes, oh, okay. sometimes, sometimes. No. Yeah. <laughs> So we saw sort of a cheeky QB sneak, if you will, but this time more conventionally, they're just gonna gander off to the left side. And it looks like a first Ilio down Almedia here for Ilio Almedia. Down so interesting. Do they have like first a Hydra down. of running backs back there? As I mentioned, Lim with 120 yards, Awusu with 112. They're giving the rock to pretty much everybody back there. Yeah, GTA, the last, you know, since the start of the game, they've run that little off tackle play where they bring one of their wing backs in motion. This time they run the same motion. They hand the ball to him. He hands it back to the other guy in a reverse, and they run that little reverse play for a huge game. First, first down for GTA. Let's see if they can get something cooking here. GTA lost with only putting up one point against the Fratman. Then they lost to the Hurricanes, only putting up three points. But as I mentioned, they put up 20 last week against the Skyhawks. Unfortunately, just getting absolutely twisted before the line of scrimmage. This time this is, is David Lim. Lim. And that'll bring up Lose second and long. They go back to that off tackle play. They're definitely trying to establish their off tackle power play. That's what the double wing offense is known for. London's D line is just too strong, too dominant so far. They're getting a lot of push and they're making plays in the backfield. Looking at the CGFL power rankings quickly, number one in the nation, the Regina Thunder at 4 0. Number two are the Fratman who beat the Beef Eaters at 2 0. Surprise, surprise, the Hilltop. So I didn't think it lost in the last century. They've lost twice already. They're two and two in rank six, yet somehow still ranked in front of your beef eaters, who are number seven with a two and one record. The Hilltop's so, losing twice is, I don't know if I've ever heard of that before. Yeah, in the last 10 plus years. Void with the handoff. They're gonna that get what the they very, got lost on the previous that. play. But it'll bring up third down. Third now nine. that you're on the beef eater side of the field, Although it looks like personnel is changing, they're not going to take a gamble. Hey, folks, yeah, this is a, a situation where you could try to pin them it's London deep and start to turn the field back over to your advantage. So, good decision from GTA to go with the punt here. Uh, we'll see if they can punch. cover the kick and get a good chance to get some good defensive stops by pinning London deep. So, a Canadian chess match, if you will, right now at the Citywide Sports Park, as in the dying minute of the opening quarter, the Grizzlies will try for a field position battle. Or do they have some trickery up their sleeve, Matt? Because once again, it looks like Baines is back at the 52-yard line, trying to pin the Pea Feeders back. Looks like Devin Smith is back there on the right side. They're actually going to go to the near side, and I think that is uh, McKenzie, who dropped it initially, picks it off the carpet, then continues to make his way forward. Actually made a little something out of nothing there, McKenzie Coach, as he got close to the 20-yard line. Yeah, actually, a pretty good return considering he bobbled the kick, but uh, London gets the ball back. 
just was just past the 25 it looks like but gta able to pin him deep this is a great chance for gta to get back in the game this is why i hate meteorologists i never thought today i was going to say maybe just maybe the sun played a factor on that attempted hunt catch the sun definitely shining now and Citywide field, a beautiful day it turned out to be. I'm glad I, I didn't wear shorts, so a little bit of a breeze. I'm glad I didn't get here about an hour or two before a broadcast and have to set up all this equipment in the pouring rain. I tried to time it out so I could roll in right as we went on the air. A big shout out to the real MVP and Adam Melrose for doing so, and the rest of the familia. So McCallum going back to work in this game as it is the Beef Eaters enjoying a 10-0 lead. Uh, there I say, the first big defensive play of the game, Keon Russell in on the tackle for the GTA Grizzlies. London really committing to the run. They run their little outside zone play. Get a good you know, couple yards on first down. But so far, London seems to be a first down run, second down, throw the ball, based on down a distance. Uh, if it's working for you, keep it going. Looks like the quarter change will flip the field over here. But so far, I've seen London, you know, throw in a lot of different motions, formations, personnel packages, though. GTA's really committed to their tight offense, trying to run the ball. They've had success in spurts, but so far, been unable to consistently get at any drives going. We'll see if the defense can respond here for GTA and get a stop, give them another chance with the ball in their hand to get back in the game. We go to the box score. Right off the initial kickoff, it was a rouge to make it a 1 0 game for the Bee Feeders. About five minutes and six seconds later, Mitch Spence eventually capped off the initial offensive drive of the game for the London Beef Feeders with a touchdown reception from McCallum. And then a safety conceded by the punter and Baines for the Grizzlies. Two minutes later, to be exact, made it a 10 of the game, but still, Coach, the last seven minutes and 54 seconds, no score to speak of. And I would say that would benefit the Grizzlies, who again lost these Beef Feeders in the last occasion by 53 points. Yeah, London's definitely settled into their offense and trying to run their, you know, establish the run game. Does this style of pace, though, benefit the visitors? Uh, you know what? I think... Great play here to start. Ooh, with. he juked him out of his shoes, I think. Victor Pajanin might have just had his ankles broken, Matt, after Devin Smith juked and jived his way through him. I like, to, to go back to what you were saying before, I think London is doing a good job kind of sticking with what they had as their game plan to start the game. What you don't want to do is start chasing touchdowns early. You get a couple of early scores. You think, okay, we can score on these guys pretty easily. Let's start to chase it. Maybe start to get a couple two and outs and give GTA a chance. So just keep doing what you plan during the week to do and, and make some changes at halftime if you think something's working or something's not working. So Michaela so moves right up to the center, and in fact, it's a QB sneak. There's a penalty no. on the play. McCallum needed it's inches with no. third down. And I believe they'll have it, but we'll see what the officials say this penalty's on. Yeah, a lot of times in this situation, it's defensive offside. Defensive players know that the sneak's coming. They'll try to creep up as tight as they can and line up in that neutral zone. But the, that QB sneak in Canada on third and inches is almost a gimme because of the yard off the ball. The defense has to play, but you still have to block it. You still have to get it, and it's not a, it's not a given, but it should be a gimme. Looks like London will convert here. we got an injured GT player on the field. Yeah, uh, right around the 30-yard line. I, I think he was in on the tackle on McCallum during that QB sneak in the fray of players trying to make the play. And unfortunately, 39 seconds into the second quarter of action, we do get an injury timeout here from Citywide Sports Park. Roughness is the call against GTA. And it's interesting. Back on 15 in the first Unnecessary down, roughness the against the GTA Grizzlies at the end of that play. Obviously on the quarterback, and McCallum will give him an additional yardage. Yeah, it could be just a, a bit of an emotion, you know, you're emotional because you're down. They just converted first down. You're in that QB sneak pile, which is anything can happen in there. It's like the, the Thunderdome of bodies. And <laughs> somebody throws a punch or grabs a face mask, and you, you chalk on another 15 yards for London, which puts them in Don't a great field position. With all your BP, your Jericho Dayer gets up on his the own accord. Looks like he wanted to stay in the game, actually, Coach, but no, 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 that's not how the rules work. He's got to come off for a couple plays before going back in. Hopefully nothing serious. Maybe he got stepped on, something minor, but uh, I imagine we'll see him at some point in the next couple, couple plays back on the field. Or a stinger, or you get the wind knocked out of you. There's a lot of things where it's instant pain and you don't know what it is, and after about 30 seconds ago, you know what? I'm actually okay. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to collect your thoughts and just laying there is the best feeling in the world for a couple of minutes. <laughs> then you get up and you say, okay, I'm good to go again. So once again, after the unnecessary roughness penalty, it's a first and 10 for the beef beaters, enjoying a 10 nothing lead here. It's McCallum handing this one off. Another flag on the play Blue during the development of this play. 
And it was Klubine on the carry this time for the Beefs. Yeah, Lennon's old line just really getting a great push on the defensive line for GTA. You know, I'm glad to see the referees back on the field in Lennon as well. They're the third team in the game, and they've been sitting out just as long as all the players and coaches have, and they're back in midseason form throwing flags on simple run plays in the middle. <laughs> oh, you love the officials, Matt. Don't lie. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. I, I, I don't know if love is the word I would use, but I'm definitely glad they're around. Wow, it has actually turned into a gorgeous day here in London, Ontario. Not what the weatherman predicted, but we'll take it. As again, this is OFC action, CJFL action as well. And as I mentioned before, everybody's trying to catch those Regina Thunder 4-0 to start off the year. I always thought I would never say anything different. But it ain't the hilltops everybody's trying to climb. They're trying to rumble to the thunder. I wouldn't count those hilltoppers out yet. As three run of the line, I thought the beef eaters might have been offside. Mikhail evades a sack attempt, throws this one a little low. And I don't think the reception's going to count. McCallum, under pressure. Tries so it brings up a long second down play. What does the Coach Schneider offense draw up here? A lot of different possibilities. You might want to think about getting uh, Devin Smith back involved in the, in the game so far. Sometimes in a second and long situation, you don't have a play necessarily designed for 20 yards, but you might have a player capable of picking up 20 yards. So you might tend to think player versus scheme in this situation. Who do we want touching the ball versus what play do we want to call right now? I kept my eye, though, on Devin Smith. He'll actually come to the near side of the field and join Spencer Foster. Foster waggles to the near end as it will be a high snap settled down by McCann. He's going to take a shot down the field. It is caught just shy of the first down, though it appears to be Spencer Foster once again on the reception. Just a great little like a curl flat type play. Foster works the curl, gets into that soft spot between the defenders in the zone. A great throw from McCallum. And it looks like he converted that with the, you know, by falling forward, he got to convert the first down. Good spot from the referees. Let's look at a first down on second and 20. Some weak notes. That's a healthy spot from the officials, and it benefits the home team, as he mentioned. will give them a first down from the 52-yard line of the Grizzlies. I don't know. We were right here. Uh, great play by Foster, nevertheless. By the way, now he has over 100 yards receiving. One touchdown so far. That big 80-plus yard strike in that opening game against the Hurricanes. So once again, it's a taste of Jeffrey Klubine to the Klubine. right side. So we've seen RJ, or LJ Dyer, Taz Bell, Drop and now down. it's Klubine carrying By, the biscuit uh, for Gavin Miller. Lake's crew. Yeah, they're very deep at running back, you know, mixing the backs throughout the last couple drives, keeping them fresh, which is always good, especially in a situation like this where your game plan might be to run the ball. So, you know, getting three backs involved early is definitely to London's advantage because it'll have the fresh backs for that fourth quarter. As I look at the two benches, by the way, I just see a numbers game that will probably play a factor in the latter half of this contest. A lot more red jerseys on the sidelines than those nice navy blue ones. As a corporacopia of weapons run to the line, it's a fleet pass to Bang Bell into the open real estate. A first down and a little more as he's pushed out of bounds by two Grizzlies. Yeah, McCallum did a great Force job coming off his first Russell. read, finding Bell on the swing pass, the getting the ball in his hands, and then Bell does what he does. He's very talented with the ball in his hands, and he gets a, a huge chunk of play when it's inside the scoring zone now. Good thing Keon Russell's fast for the Grizzlies, because that's a fast man and Bang Bell that can do some damage. Yeah, he had a good angle on him, and he kept his pursuit going, and did a good job driving him out of field. But Bell with a great job converting that catch, which is a difficult angle to catch the ball, getting up field. Love those passes, too, that perfectly lead the receiver. I don't know why it reminds me of, like, an outfielder going for a ball perfectly yeah. in the outfield. As McCallum, once again, the handoff to Bang Bell. So the ground attack continues to rack up the yards here for Gavin Lake. This time, though, maybe a yard or two for Tazzy Bang Bell. Yeah, Lennon's been running that zone First replay a good chunk of the game. At some point, I think you're going to see McCallum pull it and keep it. Well, GTA defensive ends are starting, just slowly starting to creep in. Every play, they take a little further step down to the running back. Second At some eight. point, look for McCallum to pull this ball and get a big chunk. I'm not trying to expose the tricks of the trade of you coaches or anything, but it, could there be some gamesmanship here by Gavin Lake, maybe not exposing their true playbook to the rest of the league for later games? Uh, yeah, maybe. I think at this point, still early in the game, 10-0. This game's still wide open. McCallum taking a shot. I believe he's got a man open. Diving in. Complete pass. Oh, so close for Spencer yeah. Foster, who already had a big play in this game. Yeah, good throw from McCallum. I thought he put it on him. Spencer Foster's got to go attack that ball in the air, but he was right there. Good read from McCallum. I really, McCallum's played really well so far. 
He's finding his first reads when they're open. He's checking the ball down when it's not. He's managing the game. Victor Pejanin has had a bit of a rough game so far here for the GTA Grizzlies. As again, he was beat on that play, but Foster couldn't reel it in. Got a long field goal here for London now from Stackhouse. As I mentioned, winds at about 17 kilometers an hour right now from the westerly direction. That will be blowing this ball from left to right for the kicker. Again, lining up here. Matthew Stackhouse, as you mentioned, a bit of a high snap. They're gonna fake it. Trying to dance his way through the pile was the holder and Brian Harkness, but unfortunately for him, Harkness. it's a turnover That's on down. Grizzly ball. Yeah, I don't know if that was a fake. It looked like the it snap was high. Harkness thought about trying to put it down and then at the last second realized it wasn't gonna happen. Harkness is an experienced football player with London Lucas. Yeah, he did a good job kind of making sure, not turning something bad into something worse. I don't know if we can get the replay one more time on that or not, but I agree with you, but I still think he had time here. Yeah, I mean, I'm get not- that I, knee down I, like Tebo. I'm not holding it, so I can't make that decision. <laughs> if that was me, I think it probably would have been over my head. Harkness did a good job just pinning it down and not letting that become a, like, you know, a disaster. But like I said, he took a bad situation, didn't make it worse by trying to do something crazy. And at the end of the day, Lennon's still in good defensive position get a good stopper. And for a team that's down 10 nothing in the second quarter, I'm pretty impressed by these Grizzlies. Yes, they're 0-3, but they seem to be, as you mentioned in our pregame, getting stronger with each game of this OFC season. Timely stops. Their defense is getting timely stops right now. I believe this is Lim to the left side. In on the tackle for the beef eaters is Matthew Smith and a couple other beasts. Another flag though on the play. I hate to say this, Matt, but we had it happen in the Hamilton game. It seemed like we couldn't say a play without seeing an orange flag fly. No comment. It's holding against the Grizzlies. So even after they thought they gained a yard, nah, they're heading in the wrong direction. It's a six-man refereeing crew, and there's six guys out there that are all trying to get back in the midseason form as well. They've been <laughs> off for two years, so London refs are the best. I love them. They work hard. They you do know, a with great your, job. With but they, your, are, they are definitely the, the best referees in the Province. But with your analogy, I just figure these referees are in the offseason on their treadmills with the whistles in their mouth, just blowing them periodically. Oh, 100%. Okay. 100%. <laughs> just like me, I was in the, I was in the treadmill in all offseason as well. And it shows. Thank you. So the Grizzlies go back to work here. It's Alex Purvis at the helm. As I mentioned, a 35% passer coming into this game. Purvis hasn't thrown a touchdown yet this season. He almost lost the ball, or did he? A pile of red jerseys get in there, but I think, nice well, job. Fletcher comes Perfect. away with the ball, and they're going to say London ball. Definitely, uh, probably the worst thing that could happen for GTA is turning the ball over inside their five, and exactly what happened there. There is a flag that may First bail out the GTA here. Grizzlies on it, may, but Look, given the way these flags have gone recently, probably not. It looked like the flag came out after the play. I would expect to see some kind of 15 yard UR penalty, something roughing after the play type of penalty. We'll see, this is a good situation for London if they do come away with possession. Objectionable conduct. Yeah, objectionable conduct, you just can't have that happen. The emotions definitely coming out for the Grizzlies now, the frustration starting to mount. Potentially the straw that breaks the camels back here, Matt, knowing that they've been playing this game so tight. As I mentioned, it feels like with the rouge and the safety and playing the field positioning game, they've really put a, a tourniquet on the potential damage that could have happened here again. They lost by 53 points to these guys the last time they played. Uh, but man, oh man, that, that's a tough break. That's a tough pill to swallow for Kravitsky and the coaching staff of the visitors. Yeah, it's hard, it's a, it's a long game. I would say right now, if I'm London, whatever your best play is, whatever the play is that you think, this is what we do best. That's probably what I would call in this situation. You definitely want to come away with points here. A touchdown would be a huge find for you off the turnover. So think about whatever the best play is or whatever you're most comfortable with. Let's run that play right here and see if we can punch it in. I would look for something with LJ Dyer or Taz Van Bell involved. We haven't seen a touchdown in this game since 9.54 remaining in the opening quarter. That was when McCallum found Mitchell Spence in the back of the end zone. As it looks like a timeout Grizzlies taken here. The first timeout of the ball game. I'll make two predictions right now. If London comes out in two backs, watch for McCallum to pull the ball on the backside. If they come out in one back, five receivers, look for some kind of double move to, to Foster or Smith. 
if they get cover zero, which GTA shown the last couple plays, they will play cover zero on the goal line. I want to give a big shout out to the rest of our crew. We got the easy part, Matt, enjoying some football and calling it for all those joining us on YouTube. But Camden Melrose doing a heck of a job with all the graphics, as well as helping out his old man, Adam Melrose. So I, I don't know how many hats he wears, but his, his head's got to feel extra tight right now. And of course, Alex Schlyoff on the camera work. I mean, this guy's been in snowstorms, practically tornadoes. I don't know how he stays on that lift other than being tethered to it. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm not really a heights guy, so you'll never find me up there. Saturdays for me is usually college football day. I told my wife I was going to do this today, and she said, great, that's awesome. Go talk to somebody else about football for a while. <laughs> Give me some quiet. So, okay, I'll see you at 6.30. And then uh, I got a big night ahead of me of watching some Mountain West Conference football games at 10.30. Wow. I love me some Mountain West Conference football after dark. Nothing says football junkie than being up at 1 a.m. watching Air Force vs. Wyoming. I was going to say, who else is it? Is like Appalachian State in that division? Who else is in there? Mountain West Conference. You got Wyoming, Air Force, Utah State, Boise State. You got San Diego State, UNLV, Nevada, San Jose State, Fresno State. I can keep going forever, baby. This guy knows his football. I folks. love college football. So, McCallum goes right behind the center. Are they going to try the QB sneak? They are. McCallum, let's eat. Beat beaters, touchdown. You don't have to get real tricky sometimes in football. It's not always about out scheming people. Sometimes it's just about, let's just go straight ahead for one yard and score a touchdown. The turnover was definitely something that GTA didn't want to have happen. London took advantage. They had to come away with a touchdown. They were able to come away with a touchdown. I think we'll start to see the momentum swing now. Well, you mentioned just the horrible break of where the fumble from their quarterback actually occurred. Then you add the unnecessary penalty that puts them right at your goal line. And you have a potential seven-point swing there, Matt. I mean, I'm not saying they were going to, but potentially the Grizzlies put some points on that last drive. We're looking at a completely different dynamic in this ballgame. Yeah, we definitely we need to see an offensive changed out of GTA at some point if they want to stay in this game. I think it's going to be hard for them to stay in their conservative run-heavy offense and stay involved in this game. They might want to go to their spread practice. We saw them using during the warm-up and start to throw the ball around if they feel comfortable with that. But at this point, London's been efficient. They've been timely. They take advantage of the turnovers. and Defensively, they've been pretty strong and stout. They've got the stops when they needed to. London seems to be in control at this point, but it's still a lot of time to go. And again, for the GTA Grizzlies, they haven't even been able to get into field goal range for their punter slash kicker in Gagan Baines. Again, he got the lone field goal for the Grizzlies 742 days ago in that 56-3 final at TD Stadium. 742 days ago, I don't remember what I did yesterday. <laughs> John's pulling out stats from three years ago. <laughs> well, unfortunately with the pandemic, you have to go back into the analogs of time now. They, they robbed us of a season, man. How, how great does it feel though to be back out doing what we all love to do, considering last year at this time, we were sitting around trying to figure out how to kill the void. Mandated ago, not to do anything. 18 <laughs> months ago, we're sitting in our basements playing video games. Maybe that was just me, but sitting in the basement, <laughs> playing video games all night. I, mean, I broke out the N64, my friend. I'm, uh, I'm fully on your back. I was about 42 years into a great NCAA 2013 dynasty. Just got fired as the head coach at Illinois oh, after wow. getting upset in the Rose Bowl. Well, speaking oh, of, did. I think they should almost uh, inquire about firing the current Illinois coach. I think they started off one and three so far this year. Old Brett Bielma, the Wisconsin Badgers. Bucky the Badger, by the way, my favorite NCAA mascot. Random too. Wisconsin's playing Notre Dame right now. I gotta check the score. See what the over/under is. So once again, the Stackhouse PAT is good. That's the second PAT of the game. That'll increase the beef eaters lead to 17 nothing. But as I keep repeating, folks, it's a little bit better than the 53 point drubbing that the GTA Grizzlies received the last time they visited the Forest City. So can the Grizzlies come out of hibernation here, Matt, and get some points before the halftime break? Could be a short kick coming. And they do that exactly. Carnage at midfield, but I think the Grizzlies recovered this ball. An absolutely fantastic Good job number. by Adam DiCarlo. I mean, talk about well, well, catching well, a football well, on the train tracks while seeing the well, headlights well, coming well, down well. at you. Yeah, that was a great 
play by the uh, GTA player to identify the short kick, get up there and field it. London really going, that was a, a decision by Coach Lake to really go for it right there. Like, we want to put this game away right now, get an onside kick back, keep our offense on the field. Unfortunately, they weren't able to recover. We'll see if GTA can take advantage of this. It seems like so far this game, GTA's just been given a bunch of opportunities and been unable to take advantage. At some point, if they want to stay in this game, they have to take advantage and start to move. Going to a little bit more of a conventional offense at this point. We'll see if this makes a difference. Alex Purvis, again, at least through the air, trying to get off the schnei a little bit as coming into this game, just 35% passing. A high snap, settled down, handed off the limb, stutter steps a pound, potential, a potential tackle. Gets about three or four yards out of this carry to bring up second and six. A four yard gain, you might not think it's much, but what that does for GTA is it shows them like, hey, we can move the ball. We're not out of this game yet. If they can string together a first down, it'll build some momentum and give them some confidence, maybe get them back in the game. One yeah. touchdown from GTA could bring them back. I was going to say, how pivotal would it be to get some points on the board before halftime? And then in general throughout this game, again, this is a team that only got a rouge in week one, only got a field goal in week two, but put up 20 points last week against the Skyhawks in that tough loss. Second down play. GTA trying to go back to work again. It's a pitch to the left side. Unfortunately, it's an even better play. I believe that's Gaddy Kazadi coming in and doing the damage. As uh, on the pitch play to the left side, looked like the Grizzlies might have had a little light on that play, but quickly shutting it down was Kazadi on Jericho Dare. We haven't seen a whole lot, sorry to you know cut you off, of Brandon Wusu. Again, the OFC Offensive Player of the Week in that loss to the Quinty Skyhawks, who picked up 112 yards and two touchdowns on 19 carries. I thought we would see a heck of a lot more of him in this game. Yeah, I mean, obviously with the rule changes in the last couple weeks in the league with the vaccination requirements, I'm sure a lot of teams' rosters have been affected. We don't know if he's a player that might not have, you know, fallen into that category where he might not be eligible to play at this point. So <laughs> I definitely think we'll see some things changing over the next couple weeks at teams as they start to sort through those problems and, and, and not problems, but sort through those situations. Well, Almost a veteran play from Gagan Baines. Realized they were a man short. Barked out his bench. Got him out there. Takes a low snap and gets this one away before a team that leads the league and block punts can get to him. It's received by Nick McKenzie. McKenzie trying to get away from a potential tackler, but can't. And Scott Bowes. Yeah, the GTA punter has definitely been their go-to guy so far. I think he's probably their best player at this point, keeping them in the game. Some great punts, especially in the face of such a strong punt block from London. Ironically, the only points on the board again, a field goal from that gentleman in that 56 to three loss the last time they visited the 519 area code. We'll see what London comes out with now. They've definitely thrown you know, a lot of different things at GTA's defense. It's been tough for GTA to maybe match up formation wise, but when do you feel like you're starting to play with house money? They have a 17 nothing lead here. I know not necessarily in this league, no lead safe until you get really late into the fourth quarter of play, but still, uh, Unfortunately, GTA hasn't shown anything offensively in this game, and it's sort of following a similar trait we saw in week one and week two of action from them. Yeah, to me, backed up this back, this far back in your own territory. I think the mindset at the start as a play caller is let's get a first down, try to give ourselves some room. If you get a second first down, then maybe you start, okay, we want to throw some chunk plays, take a shot. But in my opinion, in this situation, you're thinking first down, move the chains. We don't want to go two and out and give the, the GTA the ball back and this play to our own end zone. They go back to the bread and butter in this game, at least. And that's been the ground attack. They pick up two yards through LJ Dyer. And not every run in a football game is designed or called to get a huge chunk. Sometimes runs are called because they're like body shots and boxing. This run is going to affect the defense in the second half because we're wearing them down. That's probably a little bit of the blood is thinking right now. Wear these guys down. They have a shorter bench get him in the second half, and then we start to make our big plays. So it looked like a potential jet sweep. I think it went off the player, but and having to pick this ball up, pass. and well, make sure there wasn't any more damage was the QB and McCallum. Yeah, anytime you work that cross formation motion, trying to draw eyes away from the backfield, you always have that risk of the ball being snapped. It's a tough play to time out. Uh, I would probably say that at some point, that's on the receiver. He's got to understand that you can't cross the center quarterback line until the ball snap. We actually just talked about that last week with our guys. Never cross between the center and the quarterback before the ball snap, because that's exactly what can happen. And when it happens, it usually results in a bad play for you. London coming off of a bye week. Again, 
before that, they had their first loss of the season. They potentially could be undefeated at this point, Matt. They were tied 22 all at the St. Clair Fratman's house. And unfortunately for them, QB Michael Beal found McCraney. And McCraney sliced, diced, and did everything nice to get the touchdown from 78 yards away. Now, I thought Stackhouse might have conceded the safety there. Decides, you know what? Let's try and keep the shutout going for now as he boots it to Cardinal, midfield. And on third. the reception is Clip Close Jerry Carano. Yeah, GTA was First short of flair there. You can see the returner communicating with the bench, trying to make sure he get a second returner if they weren't able to. We talked earlier, GTA just keeps getting opportunities to stay in this game. At some point, they have to take advantage if they want to stay involved in this game. Another opportunity for them with a short field, starting just shy of the 40. They have to get their offense involved if they want to stay involved because at some point, London's big plays and all their players they have, their depth is going to come in, into play and they're going to create a big play. So GTA needs to get something going here. Which would you rather have? Your team always have an extra guy on the field and getting penalized all the time or always having one guy short and being <laughs> short personnel? I think I would rather go short just because the penalties, I mean, you can't play a game if there's constantly flags. We all know that. But uh, it's tough to play when you only have 11 on. I think it all depends on which... What number 12 is, like, what are you missing? If you're missing a center, hard to run a football play. If you're missing a quarterback, hard to run a football play. This is a great football play. Lim, Coming out of David Lim, uh, he received the handoff to the left side of the quarterback, Dwight. Alex Purvis, and I believe he's close to a first down. Uh, first yes, down he has moved the chains. Yeah, the last two series since GTA's gone to a more conventional offensive uh, formation, they've definitely started to move the ball a little bit more effectively, starting to get some confidence growing. Getting a first down there. And I'm sure over your many moons of coaching, you've had some poor teams compared to the richer ones you've taken to championships in those poor years. Isn't it more important for the coach to find out what is working right early to try and make that your bread and butter? Yeah, I think every coach has things that they feel comfortable coaching. Uh, obviously, if you're comfortable with certain types of plays and you understand yeah. how to coach those, how to fix those, what problems will arise, what, how That's to fix not. those problems, Close you tend to want to go to the stuff you're comfortable with as a coach, bark especially bark in the lean on. years. But um, And yet, as I say that, they do go back to the bread and butter. It is Lim, there again, the left side, but this time the beef eaters go, wait a minute, we've seen this record spin before, and they're all over it. Yeah. GTA might need to start throwing the ball just a little bit, just to create the sense for London that they will take some shots downfield. And um, it was interesting, we saw Purvis attempt a pass in the opening quarter of play. The wind gusted across the field during it and kind of turned it into a dying quail that never reached the intended target. And since then, it seems like the coaching staff for the GTA read that and went, nope, not today. Let's go to the ground attack. Yeah, the window here definitely plays a factor in pretty much any football game ever played. It's like a wind tunnel and you don't know where it's going, where it's coming from. But uh, I mean, it's the same for both teams and, and you got to play in the conditions you're dealt with. So. It's hard to just become a one-dimensional offense. At some point, defenses start to lean on what you're doing, and you have to go into your bag of tricks. Yeah, unless, you, unless you're dominating on the ground, which GTA hasn't been so far. We've got a soccer ball in the field from the adjacent. Well, speaking of uh, the perks of Citywide Sports Park, yeah, there's a soccer game going on behind us, but great timing. There was an unofficial timeout at the field as the officials were talking to the QB and Purvis. And now Purvis goes over to the GTA bench to relay that message. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on in the field. I was concerned with the soccer ball over here. I mean, I'm it's a different kind of football. Different Matt. kind of football. The day, it's a great day so far. The weather, you're right. The weather's changing, and for the positive, we're getting some nice sunlight out here, which is good because obviously we're supposed to have a 6 p.m. kickoff here, and had to bump it back for some unfortunate reasons, which I think we're going to talk about in the future. Well, why not let's get into the gravy and fries right now. You hear this peculiar noise. It's not a beehive in Matt's head. No, no, no. It's a generator going on. Why? Well, because where there's a will, there's an Adam Melrose, folks. And my God, when they pull all the electrical wire out of a sports facility, you think, you can't do a broadcast. Then you need something called electricity. Well, Adam got to thinking gassed up the generator, and what do you know, all this technology thanks to fossil fuels. Yeah, somebody came into the citywide at some point over the last few days, I'm assuming at night. And, and this has happened, your baseball player, Dan Pullman Park, got hit, and I believe Aldridge or another baseball park got hit. So somebody is learning that all these giant grandstands have expensive electrical equipment in them. They seem to come at night and literally drag them out of the towers and out of the grounds. They've even gone into electrical paneling boxes. I'm pretty sure that's one way to get shocked. 
absolutely. So as he takes a hit, Purvis makes the play. It's the first reception of the day Purvis for the GTA Grizzlies. The Just trying to make Louis out the Paisley. number of the gentleman. It's William Paisley. And it's shy Paisley. of the first down, but still a first positive, if you will, in the aerial assaults for the visiting Grizzlies. Yeah, GTA, 11, as we said, they moved back to a more conventional offense. They're starting to move the ball. It looks like GTA is starting to steal the momentum back, much like Vandals stole the copper wearing from <laughs> Citywide Field this week, putting us in the situation where the game had to be moved back because there was no lights available, and we're now sitting generator-powered thanks to... You're stealing my catchy Melrose. puns, Matt. I don't like it. As now Purvis went this off the limb, another limb to the left side. And to be honest with you, coming away with the pigskin are the beef eaters, but they're gonna say he was down. And unfortunately, I think Lim is also down right in front of his own bench. I'm just so thrilled to be able to make uh, witty comments about football games to somebody else. For the last 18 months of lockdown, I've, had, I've only had myself in the basement to comment to. And the problem is I started to answer myself at some point. I realized I need to get out of the house so I came here and, and talked to you guys about football. Just a couple minutes remaining here before halftime. Again, a 17-0 game. Thank you for joining us from around the world here on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Over 60,000 views in 2019 when we did football. Remember we called an OPFL championship game, you and I, Matt. That's the last time we were on yeah. this station. As uh, seems like many moons ago. As I mentioned, though, it seems like that for everybody. 700 42 days the last time these two teams saw each other in this sport well we got a final in uh chicago notre dame 41 wisconsin 13 and Ooh. old matt snyder is a couple dollars richer <laughs> well, maybe you can fund our future broadcast with your uh, vegas endeavors matt you know what i won't be replacing the citywide uh, copper wiring that's for sure i'm really liking what i've seen out of gta in the last couple drives since they've gone to the more conventional offense they got a long field goal situation here, which could put them on the board. So far, their kicker's been the player of the game for them, and he's going to take the take his chance here. It looks like about a about a 37, 38 yard field goal for GTA. Now I thought a timeout was called. Instead, there's a flag on the play. Looks like some of the coaches on the GTA Grizzlies are saying it's on the beef eaters. We'll see if that's the case though with the people that count, which are the officials. That'll if the if it's a five-yard penalty on London, you'll have an interesting decision because it'll put GTA in a third and one. And now the coaches have to decide are we gonna go for this or do we continue with the field goal team on the field? We'll see. It looks like GTA we're seeing some substitutions. Could be a situation where GTA is saying, hey, let's let's go for it. Third Off and one. Is the ball against the beef eaters. Yeah. So, Five yard penalty, it'd be a third and one. Leave it a third and short. Looks like GTA is gonna go. I like this call. This is a gutsy call for a team down 17-0 with the momentum the last few minutes. Um, the problem is you gotta run into that talented defensive line of London, which has been their strong, their strong suit so far. This will be a key play for this. This play in the second quarter will be a key play for GTA. If they can convert and keep the drive going. And at the helm right now is Ryan Boyd, not Purvis. It's Boyd, the bigger boy, rumbling on the QB sneak, trying to push Boyd. himself over. I don't believe one of the Grizzlies Ball understands forward. this sport, Coach, because two of them said first down, and one of them indicated Ryan's touchdown, a, down, a few down, yards shy of good. that particular major. They're just happy. But <laughs> hey, they got the first down. That's a huge play for GTA to keep the drive going with uh, you know three minutes left in the half, a good chance the three-minute warning will, will happen shortly. And, Hopefully they can get on the board and stay in the game. London, obviously, you have them backed up facing field goal. You give them a first down because of an offside. Allow them to keep the drive going. Disappointing penalty for London. I think the Grizzlies can really thank Alec Spears for helping out uh, his quarterback and Ryan Boyd on that QB sneak. It looked like Spears took the damage while Boyd got the first down. Yeah, Boyd looked like a big a big, big fella from the sidelines and he's able to push it and push forward for that key first down. GTA just continually been given handed opportunities in this game. Looking to take advantage, get on the board. 17-7 going into half is a lot different than 17-0 or 24-0. Gives Again. you some momentum. The offense has been moving the ball effectively the last few drives. First and 10 from just outside the red zone as they're trying to, like Matt said, get on the board for the first time in this game. And think about it, the first major against London in what, 800 plus days? So we'll see if they can do it. 
It's a play action. The pass is completed. GTA trying to, well, get towards the end zone. They'll be shy of that, but first down nevertheless. That's back-to-back -back completed passes from Purvis, and we're starting to see a pass game get its rhythm. Yeah, it looked like the same concept they ran a few plays earlier, that little in-breaker to the wide receiver. They had one-on-one -on, -one on, the, on the short side of the field closest to us with Antonio Chambers one-on-one -on -one against the London defender. We'll see if they go back and take a shot at some point with that one-on-one -on -one for GTA. I think that was William Paisley again on the reception for the visiting Grizzlies in those snazzy Argo-esque like uniforms with white pants. I do like the uniforms here. Yeah, you're, I, I like you, Matt, because you're a fashionista both, like me. Yeah. Both teams, I was just gonna say, are, are both teams are very well, uh, well dressed. Good fashion sense in this football game so far. It's a handoff this time. The Grizzlies towards the end zone, but there's a flag well, on the play. On the carry was Dare, Jericho Dare. If you're a football fan and anytime you see a run that goes outside the tackle and the flag comes from behind the offense, it's nine times out of 10, that's a holding call. Offensive players, you know, offensive linemen, they think a play is going inside, they position their body to, to block from that angle. As the running back goes outside, the defender reacts, starts to move away and the offensive players, you know, his hands come out and you get a lot of holding calls in that situation. A drop in the bucket of you compared to your coaching experience, but I would like to see them go to a similar play action here. You know, you've been kind of putting that foundation in with your run. You just got stymied on that last run play thanks to the penalty flag after doing some damage. I would assume London thinks, at least from the defensive side of the fence, that a run is coming to their right side or the GTA left side. And that, if you run that play action through Jericho Dare, they might be able to do some damage. As you see, William Paisley on the near side. One on one here at the top of the screen. There He's it is. He's trying to go to Paisley. Oh. Well underthrown, though, and that will bring up second and long. It looked like they had some kind of an option route on where the receiver and the quarterback will decide on the route at the line based on how they get covered. The receiver was working some kind of a hand signal. To me, a, mis a miscommunication between the quarterback and the receiver because yeah. the quarterback thought he was going to run some kind of short inbreaker and the receiver ran an outbreaker. Yeah, from an outside perspective, that ball either has to be lasered in there pretty tight, or like we saw with the Vang Bell play earlier, leading them down yeah. the field in open territory. Absolutely. To me, that, that's a miscommunication. Two guys not on the same page on a play that they're gonna make a decision at the line of scrimmage. Jericho Dare is behind the quarterback in Purvis, who's in the gun. Once again, Paisley runs to the line to the near side. He looks again towards Paisley, one-on-one. -on -one. Paisley catches it, but he is shy though well shy of the end zone to bring up third and goal and I think at this point you see Gagan Baines will come out and he will try and repeat what he did last time in London which is get a field goal and get the goose egg off the board for his Grizzlies. Yeah GTA came out with almost the exact same play they had that one-on-one -on -one to the short side of the field closest to us they threw the outbreaker that time and they were able to convert it just not for enough yards they'll take the field goal here I think it's a good decision you want to get points after such a great drive, the most effective offensive series for GTA so far today. Let's get points, walk away with something positive, make sure we start to feel better, keep the confidence high, and go into the half, hopefully down 17-3, down two scores. 20 yard attempt, William Paisley will be the holder. Again, it's Gagan Baines going out to attempt the field goal. From the right hash, the ball is down, the kick is up, he splits the fork, Baines, did get touched by the beef eaters, by the way, but no flag on this play. The goose eggs off the board. The Grizzlies had three, thanks to Gagan Bay. That's Jordan Fletcher for London. Is a, he's a big boy. It's hard to keep him away from the ball. He, he just pushed through there like nobody's business. But the, definitely a great drive for GTA. Come out, more of a conventional offense. They moved the ball. They got a, assistance by a couple London penalties to keep some drives going. But they're starting to find the rhythm. Quarterback's starting to find the receivers, and, and the offense is starting to come alive here. And more importantly, for the coaching staff of the Grizzlies at the halftime break, I think you referred to this earlier in their last drive, it allows your team to know we can beat these guys, we can get points on them, so don't give up, stick to the plan, and let's come out in the second half and try and pull out the victory. Yeah, there's definitely things as a coach that you can go into halftime and talk to your players about like, all right, here's what's working. Here's what we want to do in the second half. You're starting to formulate a plan. And uh, essentially at this point, they need to get a stop, get out of this half down 17-3. Do not allow London to score. And then come out in the second half with your answers, make your adjustments to see if you can make a game out of this. 
guys like Austin Scarpelli, Chad Stewart, Kevin Griffith, Haley Ferguson, and McCarty Seeley are just a few names in the coaching staff of the Bee Feeders. Is there anything you would change defensively right now as you see the beautiful graphic on your screen? I think at this point, you, you start to see who London, or sorry, who GTA wants to get the ball to. To me, scheme-wise, you probably are committed to what you're gonna run. You might wanna think about changing personnel if, if you have a matchup that you're not comfortable with, making sure your best guys are on their best guys and, and vice versa. But other than that, I think London's done a good job defensively. They're able to get pressure from their front four. Just keep getting after the quarterback. And when you get those second and tens, you gotta get off the field with a stop and do not take penalties after the whistle to give GTA first down. The man who broke up the goose egg, I think was looking for one more point there with the Rouge, but unfortunately for him, it's Dyer grabbing it around his one yard line, sandwiched by a couple Dyer, Grizzlies right around the 30 turn. yard line. It'll be first and 10 from the 29 for the home squad. You'll notice Parker. at the end of this run, Dyer does a great down, job of finding his lane, but at the end of the run, you see him throw line. that offhand over the ball and protect it. That's just years of getting yelled at by some old fella sitting right beside you, telling him to protect the football. So he's definitely taking the coaching he's had through his, his and, high school and, and minor career. And I thought Yuhan Ju on that play for the Grizzlies did a great job to shed off the potential block and go right in for the tackle. One thing I'll say is GTA's special teams, their coverage teams have been actually very effective so far this game. They've gotten good punts, good punt cover, uh, good protection on their field goals. Their special teams are definitely the highlight of the, of the day so far for GTA. Oh, and you couple that with the fact that the Beef Eaters pretty much have a big special teams play in every week of competition. They've done their best to pretty much eliminate that. We get some stiff arm action. I like Ooh, that. Right, That's a Gary. football play right there from Jeffrey Klubine as he takes on not one, not two, but three God. Grizzlies to gain a couple yards to bring up second and seven. Klubine is just the definition of a tough off runner. Just hits it hard, gets his pads down. Second and four. Not, not a guy that's going to try to you know, juke you or dance. He just wants to run through you. And runners like that never go to style. They always have good days because they just hit it hard and it's a very effective style to run. That's oh. how I would run if I was 50 pounds lighter and <laughs> didn't have terrible knees and a bad hip. Well, as you say that, though, if you recall earlier in the game, he juked and jived his way through a GTA Grizzly and I thought might have broke his legs. Trying to do that just right now is Taz Vang Bell. Vang Bell right into your living room, folks, after Taz picking up Bell the first down. It's a very effective Force combination down, when you go to Klubine, who's basically the hammer, and then Grizzly you bring in Vang Bell, who's a surgical knife, trying to knife through. So tough as a defender to kind of load up to say, okay, this guy's going to run through me. Oh, no, this, this guy's going to run around me. Oh, oh, yeah. And then you have LJ Dyer to throw oh, into that equation as well. LJ Dyer is like the closer from your baseball line, team that just comes in and throws fastballs. He's not going to throw a changeup. It's just going to be a lot of fastballs. Can't get off the tool analogy, Matt. That's not how that works. Starting to see GTA players. Could be the depth. The depth will start to play a factor in the second half. I think we talked about this earlier in the game. Yeah, in the first quarter, I was just noticing a simple numbers game. You look over to the far sidelines, and there's two benches. Beef feeders on your left and GTA to your right. And there's just, I mean, the eye test seems to be way more, almost double the amount of red jerseys on one side compared to the amount of navy blue jerseys on the other. As helping out his teammate right now is Amelia or Elio Almeida, and hopefully being okay will be Ferris Al Shumeri, as Al Shumeri needs some help to come off the field by two of his teammates. I just have to say again, these jerseys for GT are definitely sharp. They're very nice. I'm a fan. And once again, the GTA Grizzlies came into this league in 2014. Yes, they're still looking for their first winning record. Their first, I guess, best season, I would say, came back in the 2016 season when they finished 3-5. and five. Last year, or I should say last season in 2019, thanks to the pandemic, they were 2-7. and seven. Their worst years, Matt, they still won a game. 1-7 in, in their opening competition in uh, 2014. That actually tied the Grand River Predators. Remember them? They went 1-7 and seven too. And they went 1-7 in 2017 as well. McCallum protected, but not for long. It's a sack for the Grizzlies. Javar Miller. It's Miller time. Give GTA credit. They've had some tough years, but they foul back every year. They keep fielding a program. They are providing opportunities for kids to play, which I mean, I think it's important to want players playing football. And what I never understood, Matt, especially from a guy that grew up in Scarborough in his early days, is, I mean, you're talking about a cultural hotbed that is the definition of Canada, which is known as the Greater Toronto Area. It shouldn't just be hockey. We should be dominating soccer, basketball, 
football. You name it, because you're getting the best of all across the world coming into one gorgeous city. I'm just kind of shocked that the GTA Grizzlies haven't had more domination over their seven plus years of history. Sometimes the teams that are based in big areas like Toronto, you see it in the university level with like New York and Toronto, sometimes the size and kind of the the scope of the city being so spread out, it almost works against you because it's tough to get your players together. Whereas in London, everybody's in one area, you have a nice field, it takes you 10 minutes to get there and, and you're at practice. So. And to go to exactly that point, let's say a kid like me back in the day grew up in Scarborough, yeah, with Toronto traffic, you're looking at about an hour and a half drive to the west end of Etobicoke, and that's not the fault of the GTA Grizzlies. That's just the logistics of having the most popular city in all of Canada. I think we've all been stuck in Toronto traffic at some point. I was there yesterday, Matt. Don't get me started. I'm getting the headaches coming right back to me. Sometimes that does play a factor. It's, it's, a, it's a blessing. You have a lot of opportunities for players, but it's a curse because... Well, it's you, tough to get there. You know all about bus legs, but it's difficult when the bus legs and you still haven't left your own city. <laughs> it's McCalum will take the high snap. A beautiful job by McCalum. Pump fakes, looks up the field. There's a flag on this play. This one's reeled in, sandwiched between two Grizzlies. Devon Smith on the reception. I have a feeling though this one's coming back on a holding call. Yeah, it looks like the London just had a little, what they would call a smash concept where the outside receiver runs a little hook. The inside receiver runs a corner. You're basically trying to high low the cornerback. And unfortunately, Scott Bow is who was in on the tackle on the receiver and Devin Smith that gets injured. Why is that a double no-no for the Grizzlies? Well, there was a penalty on the play. They were already getting yardage out of it in their favor, and they lose a player in the process. Yeah, we're seeing, starting to see the injuries for GTA mount up. We'll see if this causes some, some problems. Whenever you get a couple players injured in the middle of a game, where it affects you most is on your special teams because you have to sub those players in. Maybe that guy that's hurt was your wing back on your kickoff cover team, and he was your left number three on your kickoff team. And, and think also, about it, you got to get players in those spots, right? In, in professional football, like the CFL, we see so often, and even in the NFL, there's guys that start their careers off at special teams. Some of them don't even really leave, Matt, but that's your entry point, and it's an important part of this game. And there's a lot of coaches that make a lot of money coaching special teams because there's a lot of headaches involved, making all those substitutions on the fly as players get hurt. The OFC Special Teams Player of the Week didn't play for either of these squads, but he helped the Quincy Skyhawks get to get their first ever victory in franchise history in that 31-20 win over these Grizzlies. Connor Rafferty hit five field goals, 15 points from your kicker as you put up 30 in the game. And the worst part is I had him on my OFC fantasy bench, so I <laughs> yeah. didn't even get the points. But uh, congratulations to Quincy, like we talked about earlier. Really good program, a proud program, trying their absolute best to get something established there. That hotbed of football, they've really taken off with football over the last couple of years, starting with their summer program, moving up to the junior ranks, providing opportunities. Good for them. Substitution here by the Grizzlies during the timeout. David Rosick comes off, and it looks like Aaron Collins goes in and good news for Grizzlies fans as Scott Bowes appears to be okay that's actually the I think second or third time we've seen that from a Grizzly where it looked like it potentially could have been a serious injury the way they reacted on the initial play training staff must have that you know Mike's secret sauce in a water bottle there because whatever they're doing is working because their players are sprinting back to the sidelines I'm sure everybody not just GTA fans like seeing that Second and 20, what do you go with here, John? You bomb it, the bomb. You know, from NFL Blitz, that's my go-to play. <laughs> Melrose knows all about that, he always loses. As this is a fake handoff, what is this trickery? Schneider down the field, the dying quill through the hands. Oh my word of Spencer yeah. Foster after Devin Smith chucked the rock. It out to Spencer Foster. I, lo I love the call, Please. I love the design. Third and long. Inches away from execution. Inches away. But you mentioned it actually earlier when it came to the potential reception. You gotta get those plays when they go right through the bed bread basket. You gotta attack the ball in the air. One thing I've noticed out of GTA's defense, their cornerbacks are, are playing very off the receiver. Second half, London may want to think about throwing some short stuff underneath and getting the ball in their hands to the receivers early and letting them convert. Because the GTA defensive backs are playing very far off the field. We got a dog yeah, I was here. just going to say, where are the dogs at? The dogs oh, yeah, at? they're right, right behind, behind us. us. There you go. Who let them out, though, Matt? That, they never answered that damn question. A 
lot of uh, a lot of noise, a lot of ambient noise at this field. Uh, generators, <laughs> generators, dogs, dogs okay. Reds happy? fans, they're everywhere. Ah, happy to be here. <laughs> Stackhouse oh. is gonna fake this. Are you kidding me, Stackhouse? No, eventually boots it away without crossing the line of scrimmage. Receiving this back at the 45-yard line, I believe that's Cliff Jerry. Karanov. I, I can't see that have being a fake in this situation with 20 seconds left in the half, that far back. I don't think that's a, a situation where you would want to waste your fake. To me, that was, looks more like the... It was felt the pressure and tried to scramble away. It yeah. was a double fake. Yeah. He faked me out of the fake and still punted it away. He thought about, thought about faking. Well, we saw earlier a potential field goal where the holder said, Nah, I gotta get out of Dodge. There's not enough time to put this one down. and. Well, Stackhouse, I think like you just mentioned, felt the heat of that situation, decided to cool himself off by stepping off to greener pastures and eventually booted it away anyway. That was a very impressive play from Stackhouse. A first year beef feeder brought in late before the beginning of the season from Coach Gavin Lake. Great punt on the move. If I tried to kick a ball while running, bad things would happen. So with 15 seconds left here, do you dare try and chuck the rock deep if you're the Grizzlies? Absolutely, why not? Nothing else to lose. Alex Purvis, as I've mentioned before, 35% passer coming into this game. Looks like a blitz coming from the beef feeders. He's going to huck this one to the near sidelines. A jump ball, Purvis incomplete pass. pass. William Paisley up. seems to be the go-to target for Purvis. Work. Paisley has two receptions already nine in this game. Couldn't reel in the third one, though, and a second and ten with nine seconds left. The, the Do you take one more shot or just take a knee into halftime? Uh, you know what? I think if I was GTA, Try to get one-on-one -on -one with your best guy. London's probably gonna play coverage here. See if you can get a, you know, kind of a miracle play here. But uh, big shout out to Alex Schleihoff, Camden Melrose, Adam Melrose, Matt Schneider, and yours truly, Johnny Urban. Happy to take you through live all around the world on YouTube live from Citywide Sports Park in the Forest City. It's the London Beef Eaters looking to improve to three and one. The GTA Grizzlies looking to try and grab their first win of the 2021 season. Coming into today, 0-3. Another 15-yarder on London here, given GTA, this is... Oh, we spice it up a little bit, a little oregano at the end of this bland dish. Good, good chance now, you're kind of in your Hail Mary situation, or Hail Mary territory, where if you want to take a shot, and you had a quarterback that you felt had the arm, maybe you let him run around and, and just throw it up as high and as far as you can. Are you the kind of guy that thinks pepper's hot, man? Oh yeah, uh, me, I'm... <laughs> It's <laughs> Purvis on the gun. Once again, a similar play. This could oh. be picked off in and out of the hands of Travis Clark, who could have had the interception. It would be the first INT of the game. Paisley did a great job breaking that up because if that Three London seconds. receiver Clark, if the London defensive back Clark caught that clean, he was probably gone. There was not much between him and the end zone. So they tried it twice. There was nothing nice. It brings up a third and ten with again three seconds left and instead of potentially throwing it for a third time and like you said maybe getting burned with the matchsticks looks like the man who's got the only points in this game and in the last game against the beat feeders and Gayen Baines goes out. Is it third down or is it second? They had the penalty that gave, gave a first down. The oh yeah you are right. I thought it was second down but GTA's got their punt team. Oh okay. they're picking a long field goal here. Whoa, this is a long field goal. Wow, this would be a 51 yard strike. What you gotta worry about in this situation is, is the return. Is the return on the miss. Auburn, baby. It's Auburn's gonna win oh, the football game. I love that game. Snap and hold is good. The boot is up. This is not gonna have enough though. And here comes the return as Coach Snyder was alluding to. Going to the far sideline, skipping off of one tackle, but then going out of bounds to take us into halftime. Uh, that was number 28, Gammy Kazadi. He got us all hyped up for nothing, Snyder. At the end of the halftime break, it's 17-3 for the beef beaters. Put yourself quickly before we go to the halftime break in Grizzlies coaching staff. You finally got three points near the tail end of the second quarter to get the shutout off the board. How can you improve on it in the second half? When they changed to their conventional offense, second quarter, things started to move for them. Their offense was starting to get momentum. Quarterbacks throwing the ball pretty well. Uh, I would probably stick with that in the second half. Keep throwing the keep throwing the, the ball, mixing in some runs, um, trying to get advantage of your one-on-one -on -one situations that London's defense is giving you by formations. London, offensively, second half. I, I think my focus as a coach would be, who are my best three guys? Let's get them as many touches as we can, and let them make plays. So, Dang Bell's got to get five touches in the second half. 
We got to get the ball to Foster a couple times in the pass game through some screens and some short yardage throws. Let him run. And then maybe when you get a situation where you like it, take a couple shots deep and see if you can create plays. Uh, the number 10 Smith is a guy that I would think about taking a shot deep to. He seems to be a player that's going to go up and attack the ball. And then defensively, both teams just have to keep doing what they're doing. Eliminate the second and long penalties that give teams first downs. You cannot gift either team a first down, especially when you're getting off the field defensively. You have to be disciplined with the penalties. It was 10-0 going into the second quarter. Very quickly, the box score with 9.27, second, or 9.27 left in the second quarter. A QB sneak from McCalum capped off a drive to give him a rushing touchdown. Then with 1.26 remaining in the first half, a 20-yard field goal from Baines makes it a 17-3 game. For the rest of the crew, I'm Johnny Yu. This is halftime. We'll catch you around for the second half of action.
a citywide sports park here in the Forest City as the two and one beef eaters look to grab their third win of the 2021 OFC year, taking on the winless GTA Grizzlies and have a fortuitous 17 to three lead at the halftime break. I'm John Urban joined by Matt Snyder. And again, for the Grizzlies, they're gonna try and claw their way back into this one, Matt. Great day so far. The weather has turned in a positive direction. We got beautiful sun. It's not too hot, not too cold. Nice breeze, great music, great atmosphere, and we're playing football, so everything's good. I wanna take you down a trip down history lane back when you and I were just young lads. 1999, the Windsor AKO Fratman, they were called at that point, won 32-24 over the Okanagan Sun. That's the last time an OFC team has won a Canadian Junior Football League Championship. The Beef Eaters made it to the semi-final in 2019, but lost by almost 50 points to the then champion Saskatoon Hilltops. Why do I mention that? Well, the OFC hosts the CJFL Championship this year on December 4th. Interesting fact about the AKO team that won the National Championship. Pretty sure they had a player named Brett Romberg on their team. He's a center from Canada, ended up playing University of Miami. Uh, I think he won a national championship there and then ended up playing for the Jacksonville Jaguars. How do I know that? I am a football nerd, so. <laughs> and again, the Beef Eaters history goes back to the 60s and 70s. Uh, they're looking for some CGFL glory after getting to the epitome of OFC glory last time we had a season. And as I mentioned, the Grizzlies founded in 2014. Yes, still looking for their first winning season, having their best performance come back in 2016 with a three and five record. But still, as we've seen it here today, this is a team that just doesn't give up. Doesn't matter if it's David or Goliath. Baines is here to kick off, and he's been the best player for GTA so far. Punting and kicking, attempted that long field goal to end the half that came up short, but not short of effort. And so we'll see if, if Toronto can get a good stop here and get the ball back. They were starting to pick up some momentum. Miscommunication between the receivers on this punt from Baines forces Bang Bell to go back into his own zone to retrieve it. Sprints to the near sidelines, but runs out of real estate on the angle he took. And this will be a, well, a long trip, if you will, for McCallum and the beef beaters to try and get a major on this drive. Oh yeah, and there's a penalty flag on the play. Bell is so dangerous with the ball in his hands and in space. Penalty looks to be on London, probably a block in the back or some kind of a holding penalty, which will drive them back. Um, they'll start off deep in their own territory. Looks like around their own 15 yard line, the deepest they've started this entire game. Yeah, we'll see if they come on the second half and continue to try to establish the run. Coach Lake's done a good job calling the run plays and mixing them in. And I apologize, I'm actually gonna correct myself. It's the deepest drive coming into the game off of a kick. If you recall, they had that fumble recovery off of Purvis, the quarterback eventually capped off with a McCalum touchdown. Yeah. yeah, we'll see if London comes out in the second half and just continues to establish the run, mixes in some throws from McCallum. They've done a good job of getting the ball to oh, Foster yeah, yeah. and uh, number 10. And, and then obviously mixing in the three running backs, Dyer, Bluebine, and uh, Tazzy. Done a good job running the ball. London's offensive line's been pretty strong so far, moving the defensive line of, of GTA. And, so far, so good for London. Things are looking well. You know, they've, they've been a little bit conservative so far, but I think that's by design. Uh, a team like this, you don't want to give GTA short fields, so kind of a war of attrition. Just wear them down. Continue to just run your offense, do what you're best with, and we'll see if they can come away with some points on this drive, starting on the one. If they do, I was gonna say, it'll be, it'll be a long one. There's an objectionable conduct penalty tacked onto that play, and to your point, from the one-yard line. So 109 yards needed by the home team if they want to get their first major of the second half. It's tough to call plays when you're so far backed up. We'll see what Coach Gavin Lake dials up for the beef feeders here to start the second half. They've been very run heavy in this game and it's safe to say the safest play would be a run right here, would it not? Yeah, definitely. So in the backfield, I believe that is LJ Dyer, just to the left side of McCallum, who's taking the snap out of the gun. He hands it off to Dyer. There's flags on this play. Dyer just does get out of the end zone, by the way, to avoid a potential safety. But I believe this flag is going up against the Grizzlies as McCallum once again drew the line offside. Great. That's a veteran call by a veteran quarterback to hard count, 
backed up in your own territory. Worst case, you go offside, they back you up three inches. <laughs> Best case, the defense goes outside, you get a free five yards, and now it's second and five, or first and five, and you're off your goal line. So that's a veteran play, something that older quarterbacks kind of understand, and good decision if this is what they did, and if the penalty's against GTA, great and call it for is. It brings them five yards of breathing room, to your point, Matt. The veteranness comes through in the clutch. And again, McCallum has tasted action against these GTA Grizzlies. 742 days ago, he came in as the backup for then Jake Powell. And he still went three of six passing for 42 yards and threw a touchdown. This one, he throws to the outlet. I think that is McKenzie who gets wrapped around, but yet won't go down right away. Second time around, they do finally get him to taste the turf. And no, I apologize, it's not McKenzie in five. It's Mitchell Spence in six. Little, little bubble pass there, probably attached to some kind of a run. That's an RPO type scheme where the quarterback looks at the defense and says, okay, where do we have the numbers out wide? Let's throw the bubble. If not, in the box, do we have the numbers? Let's run the ball. Uh, McCallum makes a great decision, gets the ball to Spence. And the nice thing about that play is it's a, essentially a run play, but you're getting the ball to one of your better athletes out in space, letting him do what he's gifted with. And Spence moves the chain. So again, remember, they started off at their one yard line. They quickly advanced to their six yard line and they're almost out of their own red zone right now, Matt. They're gonna go back to the ground attack and pick up a couple to the right side. And that's how you get out of your end zone and start a good drive. Get a first down, get another first down, all of a sudden you're close to midfield, now you open up your office to start to take some shots. And again, if you're just joining us and wondering what that loud humming noise is in the background, it's a gas generator. Proudly powerfulling this broadcast through your Saturday afternoon. After somebody has been conveniently going out around the sports facilities in the 519 area code, and ripping all the electrical wiring out. Now, I will say this, why don't scrapyards kind of take notes that, wait a minute, this guy just brought in about 500 pounds of ground wire and question where it came from. <laughs> just, yeah, just thinking about it. Definitely uh, vandals <laughs> out there. You know, we're, we're just trying to play some football here and these guys are out there stealing all the copper wire. And soccer, right on, but soccer right. fields, yeah, football yeah. fields, and baseball parks have been hit in this city over the last yeah, month or so. And on that note, normally practicing on weeknights are the beef eaters here. They've moved their practices to St. Thomas earlier this week because of the results of what happened here. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that the actions of somebody affect so many people just trying to like, kind of come out of the pandemic and get back to the regular things that we all love to do, playing football, coaching football, watching football. And I can't complete the bubbles quote from the trailer park boys, but Ray pulling the copper plumbing out of your walls for beer money is blank. So once again, McCallum will go into the gun. He's got three weapons now to his left side, including Nick McKenzie. So two will run in motion. In fact, they're gonna spread the offense to the right side. That's where McCallum's gonna to toss this ball. It is caught, but really no yak, no yards after the catch for the beat beaters there. And they'll bring up a second and long situation. Yeah, I like the call though from London, trying to get the ball out to the edge quickly. We talked at the end of the first half, the GTA defensive backs are playing pretty far off. So it's nice to just throw an easy pass out to a guy that you like and let him try to make the defender miss. Unfortunately, the GTA players rallied to the ball and they got a good stop. London's gonna face the second and long. We'll see if GTA sends some pressure here at McCallum. Tries to force a quick pass. London again, uh, won their first game of the season, really thanks to the defense. Jordan Fletcher had a team record four sacks in that game. McRoberts blocked a punt and Kazadi returned it for a touchdown in their huge 50 point victory over the Quinty Skyhawks. McRoberts again shined with not one, not two, but three blocked kicks and a touchdown as a result. And then we mentioned the St. Clair Fratman game. McRoberts had a 60 yard interception. So it seems like special teams and defense have been the foundation, but do we see some offense here this Saturday afternoon against the Grizzlies? It's a diving catch! They're gonna say he received this one and Spencer Foster gaining a couple yards. Anytime you get Coach Austin Scarpelli's hands involved in the special teams, you know you're gonna have an effective special teams unit. This year's been no different for the beef feeders. Defensively, they're strong, great secondary, some really athletic players. Uh, the two twins from RMC that they've added the last couple weeks have been huge additions to the, to the team. Third and short from their side of the field, it appears like the beat beaters are gonna gamble here, Matt. This is a situation you asked earlier, you know, playing with house money, you're up two scores, good chance to keep a drive going if you can convert. It's a 
kind of the dagger. If this GTA. goes wrong, though, GTA could benefit with massive field positioning, but they haven't been able to stop the run often here. They're right at the first down marker. They might have to bring out the chains for this one on this Dyer dash. Yeah, this will come down to the spot of the ball from the referee. Dyer did a good job keeping his feet moving. My eyesight's terrible, so we'll see. I think they're giving them the first down. The officials conveying with one another. Remember, this broadcaster said originally to bring out the chain gang. We have not seen them come out to the citywide turf here today. And dare I say, we probably should see them here just to make it official, no? Usually when they call the defensive player over to see the spot, they're kind of showing him, like, we think it's a first down. Do you agree? If the defensive player asks for a chance, he doesn't, they don't have to give it to him, but they might as a, as a courtesy. But in this situation, it appears to me that they felt it was obviously a first down. They're going to move the chains without measuring. So You nailed that one. one. Hook, line, and sinker. The official talked with the Grizzly. The Grizzly looked at the line and went, ah, you're right, and yeah. they made the first down call. Yeah. Definitely one of those things where they, if they can save a couple referees from running out with the chains, obviously everybody's happy because... I want to give a big shout out to the GTA Grizzly fans that made the trip down to the 519 area code here today to watch their team on the road, trying to get that first win of the 2019 or 2021 OFC season. As we get a deep ball thrown here, did he hold on to it? I think they're going to say he did. What a catch from Spencer Foster. First down, beat beaters at the GTA 40. Foster did a good job coming back to that ball. It was a little underthrown, a little inside of him. I, th I thought Scott Bowis, who we saw actually leave this game with an injury only to come back, actually was going to have that plunk right off his helmet, but you said it before, attack the ball in the air, and that's what Foster did. Yeah, Foster's a great player. He's a guy that you want to get involved in your offense, and I like to call from Coach Lake to take a shot. We talked about that. Get a couple first downs, get off your the shadow of your end zone, and then start to throw the ball deep and try to pick up some chunks here. See, I think uh, you can be a fan of a team that hasn't lost really easily, but to make a trip down two plus hours and take on and watch a team that hasn't won a game yet, that's true fanatics. That's a true fan right there. Is this one, McCallum was trying to target Sam Ruby, but it's in and out of the hands of the intended target. Yeah, obviously GTA's had some struggles this year, the last couple years, maybe in the wins column, but as far as you know, playing, competing, they're right there with anybody in the league. They show up every week, they're a proud program, the kids try hard. and. They're in this game, you know what, 17-3, they've had their chances, a couple turnovers, a couple situations where they weren't able to finish some drives, but they've had their opportunities. They just need to take advantage, and if they can get a stop here, they're right in the game. London, though, seems to be driving. Their offense is really starting to click. Watch out for LJ Dyer, just to the right side of McCalum, although you have the aerial assault weapon and Spencer Foster to your left side. McCallum looks over to the right side, escapes out of the pocket, directing traffic, takes a shot deep, has a man! Incomplete pass to bring up third and ten. The intended target that time was Nick McKenzie. McCall is that McCallum down there? Looks like McCallum took a shot at the end of the play. Down could have been an ankle. Maybe somebody stepped on his toe. I have no idea. I'm just guessing at this point, but... Uh, yeah, the, you know, the, unfortunately at the tail end of that replay, you know, you got to focus on the ball. So we don't necessarily see who hit McCallum, but during that play, allowed the play to develop, escaped out of the pocket. As he did that to the right side, was directing traffic. And, you know, he took the shot. And sometimes you got to literally take a shot to take your shot. And that's what he did. Absolutely. He's definitely in some pain right now. Hopefully it's nothing serious. We were uh, mentioning at the halftime break that you've actually been really impressed with the athleticism shown in this game, and only one time necessarily from the actual QB position in Devin Smith. We could see Smith here in the third quarter. Yeah, Smith's another player that's an American player that the beat feeder signed. I believe he was signed by previous Coach Maddox uh, before Coach Maddox left the team and went back home out west. Um, but a player that Coach Lake was able to continue to stay in contact with Brought him into London. He's another player trying to make the move to Canadian football, gain some experience, hoping for an opportunity at the CFL level in the future. Super athletic. Just a, a ball player's ball player. I'm a big fan of him from what I've seen so far. I expect if McCallum can't come in, we may see him at quarterback in the next couple drives at some point. The one thing that Smith does dwell compared to McCallum on, though, is experience. Remember, McCallum threw over 1,200 yards and 11 touchdowns on 55% pass completion in the 2019 season. So far this year, has five touchdowns, 422 yards, coming into this game completing 28 of 56 passing. 
Yeah, McCallum's a, a veteran quarterback. He knows the system. He's been with the team for a long time. He's a uh, player that I think a lot of the players yeah, respect. Uh, he's a tough kid. Yeah, I, I think we'll probably see him back. He looks like he's okay now. Could have been a situation where somebody stepped on his foot or something. We've all been there with somebody steps on your foot and you just need to collect your thoughts. Not these feet. These feet have Jordans on them. I've had my feet stepped on uh, hundreds <laughs> of times. I have a big dog and she just loves to stomp on, on my feet. So. Well, if you're a Detroit Lions fan, you're used to having your feet stomped out about every weekend. And I am. I am a Detroit Lions fan. <laughs> and they are hard to be a fan of. So once again, right at the 55-yard line, this is Stackhouse looking to boot this one away, just avoiding the paw of Aldwin Higgins trying to block it. This one is loose. Now, the beef feeders touched it. If now, the beef feeders are arguing that they thought it went off of a grizzly, but I think Cliff Jerry Karanaugh kind of outsmarted them there. It looked like he was playing it, didn't, and then the beef feeders touched it for the penalty. Yeah, the GTA returner has to catch that ball in the air. You can't let it bounce around. London looked like they thought it was touched, and they jumped on it, which unfortunately for London and fortunately for GTA is going to work to GTA's advantage because they're going to get a New York penalty and should advance the ball 15 yards. So. And uh, just peculiar, you know, trying to make sure I have all my rules in check. Can the punter in Stackhouse not then go down and get that ball still in the Canadian game? Absolutely. As long as another London player isn't within the five-yard halo, if the London punter runs down and recovers it or any player that was behind the punter at the time of the kick, they're eligible to go and recover the ball and it would be London's ball. But in this situation, it uh, looks like a five... Five yard, no yards penalty because the ball bounced the ground. Once the ball touches the ground in Canadian football, the penalty goes from 15 to five yards. Although they might have called it illegal touching. I missed the call there. Illegal touching. Her, Lennon, yeah, so they, they called it. Yeah, they called it an illegal touching penalty. Lennon gets penalized because they touched the ball before GTA. Yeah, and like I said, that was all due to Cliff Jerry Carano kind of playing games within the games. This is a run play right up the middle. A pile of humanity yeah, will move about a middle. yard or two. Well, southbound, benefiting the Grizzlies. Yeah, the London defensive line has been probably the strong point of their defense so far this game. And a guy like Karn Sadu, 6'6", 290 on the defensive line. I can't imagine meeting him in the trenches is too fun. I believe he's a player that the beef eaters brought in from out west. I think he's a, a British Columbia born player, if I remember correctly. He's a big fellow. Jordan Fletcher from Connecticut, I believe, is another player that has some great size to him. The London defensive line is uh, big boys. I wouldn't want to be feeding those guys after the game. So I'm sorry to lie to you, GTA fans, but they didn't give any yards on that last rushing play. So here's Purvis again from the gun, looking to take it to the air. Does complete the pass, and I believe this is Paisley again. If it is, that's his third reception already in this game. And when you think, I think they only had three or four received balls, offensively to speak of. It's all William Paisley. I do like uh, the GTA quarterback Purvis. He's hanging in there and he's throwing the ball around trying to make some plays, so kudos to him. Unfortunately for him though, despite the Paisley reception well shy of the first down, and we're gonna see your boy, Gagan Baines, come back out again. Baines has been the player to watch for GTA so far, punting GTA out of trouble, series after series. The big field goal to put him on the board at the end of the first half. Had that long attempt as the clock expired that came up short, but not short of effort there for GTA. And He's definitely been the player that's kept them involved, kept them, kept the game closed for GTA. Let's not stand here on ceremonial ground, Mr. Wayne, says Bain, as it will be a timeout taken here by the GTA Grizzlies. Yeah, the injuries from GTA in the first half we talked about are starting to play a factor with their special teams. They've been short a couple times on teams so far. They had to call a timeout here to make sure they had 12 on. You we're getting this excellent camera work from our crew here. And again, you're seeing those blue uniforms. What's deceiving about it though, is if somehow we could get a comparison compared to the, the red uniforms, I mean, it's like red ants versus black ants. One is just outnumbered. <laughs> yeah, I definitely, uh, I think the OC is a league where your teams are definitely gonna have the higher roster at home. Might be travel issues. Players have commitments outside of football, work, that type of stuff. So. Sometimes when you're traveling, it's hard to get everybody on board. Um, Sounds so foolish, Matt, but just how much more useful it is to have extra matches in the matchbook. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the, the more players you have, the more kind of options you have available to you. It definitely helps on special teams with your depth, covering kicks and whatnot. Well, 
goal. By the way, London leads the league in blocked punts. We have not seen one here today as Gagan Baines has been able to tame the London offense. He gets another one away to midfield, rolling back and having a go off of his fingertips is Jared Hicks. So Hicks into the game, picks up the ball. There's a penalty at midfield as Hicks will run into a bit of a trouble, but then gets off of it. Sprints to the far sidelines in front of the beef eaters. Bench is down, but we have Hicks legs back at the 40, 50s the and 45 respectively. Yeah, we got a block in the yeah, back in front of us here. Uh, London definitely had a block on. They, they didn't get there, but it wasn't for lack of trying. They were going after that, not able to get there. My boy Baines, another yeah, boomer to get GT out of trouble, and the penalty is going to back London up again. Uh, a block in the back there. Looks like the there is also a Grizzly hurt in front of the Beef Eaters bench. Man, oh man, I hate to say it. Actually, I don't know it, so I'm not going to say it. But I think it's Baines. London offense will start backed up. Should be around the 40-yard line. Up by 14. Just given where the injured player is, it seems like the, you know, the last line of defense usually in these situations is the kicker of all people. And usually by that point, Snyder, you realize the guy that's coming up the field is in full steam ahead mode. Was well, the punter's going, well, wait a minute. I got to step in front of this freight train somehow or we're going to get more damage. Pretty much why I didn't become a kicker. So once again, unfortunately, another injury to the GTA Grizzlies. As the officials are asking for some space there on front of the beef eater's bench so he can be attended to. And it is Baines, number two, wow. I, again, honestly, I didn't see the number, Coach, but I just assumed where the positioning of the field was and how that play developed. I thought, well, unfortunately, the last deer on the tracks was the kicker, and it looks like that's the case. If that's Baines down, that could be a huge blow for the Grizzlies because, once again, he has been uh, one of the impact players for them so far. In 2021, the GTA Grizzlies have three points against the London Beef Eaters in this 17-3 game. That's a 20-yard field goal from Baines. 742 games days ago at TD Stadium and a 56 to 3 loss. Baines had the only three points for the Grizzlies. So if you want to combine scores, just for the heck of it, why not? You're at 73 to 6 over the last two games. Baines has all six points for the Grizzlies. So yeah, despite never really thinking about a kicker offensively. You're taking out, statistically, the biggest offensive threat that the Grizzlies have against the Beef Eaters. And this punting ability over yeah, the last two quarters has been huge for, for GTA, getting them out of countless times where they've been backed up, booming punts. So this will be a big loss for the Grizzlies if he, in fact, cannot return. Well, you want to talk about more Salt Bay on the wounds. It looks like it could be a lower body injury, specifically around the ankles for Baines. I mean... If you're a kicker, you, if your arm gets injured or you, maybe you take a knock on the head, you go, wait a minute, my golden boot is still good to go, coach. But when it's a lower body injury, not only if it's your kicking foot, your planting foot is just as important. And a lot of teams don't carry two kickers, two punters in, in into a road game, so we'll see what happens if they have to go to their second kicker. It could start to get real interesting in the kick game for GTA. Sportsmanship shown here from Ali, Elio Almeida. He must be a team captain coach because I think he's gone out and helped several of his players get to the bench in this game against the Beef Feeders. And it's just, I mean, I don't care if it's a Beef Feeder or a Grizzly. I don't want to see anybody get hurt in this game. But again, keep kind of spinning that broken record, Matt, that, you know, the numbers game has played a factor. We called it in the first half, and we're seeing it come to fruition here in the latter half of this contest. Yeah, definitely the injuries are starting to mount up for the Grizzlies. They'll see if it's something that they can battle through. Adversity is a part of football, but obviously when you lose your kicker, punter in one play. Well, to that point, at least they do have a bye week next week to recover any injuries they might suffer here today. And then they'll play who? Oh yeah, the London Beef Eaters, but that time it'll be at Centennial Stadium in the GTA, specifically Etobicoke, folks, on Sunday, October 10th. Sometimes the worst thing to do after a huge loss is go to a bye because you want to get right back out there and try to fix what all the mistakes that happened. So by the way, McCalum back into the game. A good way to get back on to the you know right side of the ledger is McCalum completing a pass to Taz Bang Balance. The yards after the catch coach that are the real doozy maker as he pushes away up to the 50 yard line of the Grizzlies. Anytime you can get the ball to Bang Bang Bell in space. That's a good play for London because he is so talented with the ball in his hands. Simple plays to the right players are very effective in football. 
kind of a quirky question to you, Matt, though. I, I feel like the offense has been fluent enough in this game for the Beef Eaters to have a lot more points than 17 at this point of the game. Yeah, a couple of uh, penalties that have you know, moved them back on second downs have been a problem. They had some timely sacks from GTA. Big run there from Bluebine. Yeah, he put him in a second and short. Gets another six yards on this carry to bring up second and four. London's offense is definitely more effective when they're in like a second and six versus a second and ten. Obviously, when you get backed up, second and long defenses can pin their ears back and bring pressure, run some kind of exotic pressures up front or play weird coverages. But in second and four, second and six range, when you don't know if it's a runner pass, you can play a little more, more uh, even defense. So London's in a good spot here to convert this if they can find the right player and the playbook's wide open for Coach Lake. Nick McKenzie to the near sidelines as two will swag to the line for McHale who's going to hand this one off once again to Klubine. That's a double dose of Klubine to the right side. Staggers pass a couple tackles, sheds off another one but Klubine, forced right out of bounds in front of the beef eaters bench but not after gaining well the four yards needed for the first down. Try and tack on another 20 plus after that. Yeah, London did a good job of motioning one of their slot backs back in the box and running off tackle play. GTA having some trouble kind of adjusting to those late formation changes from London, and London was able to get an advantage. When Klubine's running, I feel like I'm watching you play NCAA video games. Just sip arm, sip arm, sip arm, sip arm. There are other buttons on the controller. You know that, right? Yeah, I just mashed the X button a bunch of times and hopefully I score some points. <laughs> So three weapons this time to the left side for McCallum. It's Klubine after the big first down run, joining him to the left side. They're gonna give it to Klubine? No, it's a play action. McCallum taking a shot deep. I think this might have gone off the field goal post if it didn't just go off the fingertips of Devin Smith. Let's see it here on the replay, coach. Yeah, they had Smith on that little post road over top of the safety. I think GTA. the pesky post got in the way. Yeah, GTA was bringing some pressure. They had a cover zero look and Smith beat his man. Just an unfortunate, one of those unfortunate situations in Canada because the goalposts were in play. Who decided to put the goalpost on the goal line? Yeah, that was silly of a concept. Oh my god. As a play-by-play -play broadcaster of football, greatly appreciate it. Don't like doing the extra mathematics after every field goal attempt. So, very similar play formation to the last one. Let's see if they can cap it off with a first down here are the beef feeders. It's McHale, just gonna huck this one deep. Has a man behind the defense. Let's touchdown. eat! Beef Eater touchdown! Beef Connor touchdown. De Podesta! Yeah, anytime London formations into like some kind of 3 by oh, or 4 by one formation where they have multiple receivers on one side of the field, looks like Toronto's playing a, like a couple we call a cover zero look where they have man help with no safety deep and London's just working post and double move routes, one-on-one, -on -one, finding their best matchup there. They're able to find the receiver over the top of the post. Very similar design to the play they missed to to Smith, just a post with a short route in front, and London's able to get on the board, 24 to three with the extra point pending. M McCallum completed a short touchdown pass to Mitchell Spence back in the first quarter of play. He ran for a short touchdown on the QB sneak in the second quarter. Got a fake PAT there for London, and they were able to convert. Right the they direct snapped it to the up back. The I don't know if that's a call from the bench or if that's something that you kind of see Based on a look, maybe on film, you realize, that, okay, they're giving us something. And during the week, you game plan, you say, hey, if they give us a certain look where they're bringing extra guys off the edge, we want to take advantage of it. To me, that was probably what it was. We take a look again at that last deep Potesta touchdown, 27-yard pass from McHale. Looked over to the left side, almost drew the defender away, if you will. And by the time realizing Jamal Vassal that, oh, the guy's beating me, it was too little, too late. Yeah, great call from Coach Lake to get Connor De Podesta on that post road over top. Connor De Podesta, the pride of Glencoe High School, catches the post road, puts London up 25 to three. Going back to the two point convert, you mentioned that could have been called in from the bench or it could have just been something the players did on the fly. Oh, yes, Either so way, is that did. something you really should be doing at this point of the game in a 25 to three contest, knowing that Maybe in a tighter game in the future, you want to have that ace up your sleeve. You know, I think to me, if I had to be, a, if I was guessing, I would say that that was a situation where they saw something on film, the GTA lines up in a certain way on, on PAT blocks, and that they felt if we get this specific look, we want to take advantage of it because they're giving us, you know, a free open lane. So I would imagine that they saw the look they wanted and they had an automatic kind of audible in where the PAT team took advantage of it. And in that situation, if they're going to give you something, you have to take it to show other teams that we will take advantage. 
For example, you can't load up on the edge and try to send multiple players off the edge and leave the middle soft. We'll take advantage of it. So CJ or Cliff Jerry Cavanaugh actually made a little something out of nothing. That play just kept going and going and he crawled almost all the way up to the 30 yard line. Actually, ironically enough, the same spot the ball was in last play when McCallum just hit deep and tested with the touchdown. Yeah, GT has shown spurts of like great play and athleticism. And like we said, their special teams has actually been pretty strong part of their of their game so far. They just haven't been able to kind of convert continually on offense to keep on the on the field and then get stops on second and long. They've allowed a multiple second and long conversions on defense. Specifically at midfield, because let's face it, if they could get near kicking range, they have a guy in Baines that can do some damage. Purvis to the near side. This one is caught. GJ moving up the field. Break down the walls. It's Jericho Dare on a short game. Just a bubble screen out there to the number three receiver. Trying to get the ball out in space and let, and let their guy run. The Unfortunate. wrestling references aren't quite hitting you the same way they hit Ron for work. It's been a while since I watched some wrestling. I was a, we got to go back to oh, the Ron, 80s. Ron turned on Monday Night Raw the other night. I need to see some Undertaker or Ultimate Warrior references. Maybe some Heart Foundation stuff. Then I'll start to get it. But uh, Ironically enough, the beef eaters are coming out to the PA announcer to start this game and I'm going well, where have I heard this music before because it was like a symphony orchestra and then ding and you went right away Undertaker, Undertaker. well there it is so GTA second and long Purvis has weapons to the right side pitches it to the right side whoa a bulldozer style play from Jericho Dare so we saw him on the previous play we see him on this one and despite me seeing actually great sportsmanship on the play from the GTA Grizzlies, there's a flag thrown at them. There's some talky talk going on between the plays here, coach. Yeah, I'll be another 15 yarder after the whistle. Looks like uh, somebody said something or pushed. It's one of those things that. Well, Sebastian Holden for the GTA Grizzlies, he's a big boy, well over six feet and close to 300 pounds. He kind of exited the pile, just going, What are you. Why are you talking to me, man? Like, why, why are we doing this? Frustration becomes a part of it when, you know, the score starts to get out of hand a little bit. Um, you know you're going to see these guys in a couple weeks. Guys are trying to send messages back and forth. It's not what you want to see. It definitely affects you as an offensive defense when you're giving 15 yards. Would you look at it as a loss being a loss, or do you see the improvement when, again, I know GTA fans are probably cringing at me saying this again, 56-3 to on September 15, 2019. That was at TD Stadium at Western's campus 742 days ago. McCallum had a touchdown. Bang Bell had a touchdown. Spencer Foster had a touchdown. Hey, Baines had a field goal, and it almost feels like we've repeated the script here except the beef eaters haven't come close to the 50 point plateau. Yeah, I mean, it's tough when you're in a situation like GTA's where they haven't had the continual success on the field over the last couple of years. Obviously, you know, we've been away from the game for a few years because of the COVID issue, but we're back. I think there's some positives they can take from today. The quarterbacks played really well when they started to open it up in the second quarter and went to the more conventional offensive look throwing the ball a little bit. I really was impressed with how the quarterbacks responded standing in there, completing some passes. So there is some things you can take away from it as a coaching staff. Defensively, they've actually played pretty well in spurts, take away a couple you know, key second down and long conversions and the penalties. To me, the penalties have really been a, a big problem for Toronto. And the punting's been awesome. The special teams has been a strong point. They just need to find a little bit more consistency on offense and they have to eliminate those penalties converting first downs for the for the offense on, on their own. The Grizzlies were originally founded, as I mentioned, back in 2014 by a group that included then general manager Mark Holder and team president Karen S. Corfi. And then that team actually replaced the former Brampton Bears of the CJFL. So I do like how they went from the Bears to the Grizzlies and kept up with the Bear analogies, where Holder was the coach there from 2010 to 2011 with Brampton. And now he's regained this program, the GTA Grizzlies, which originally played out of Henry Carr Secondary School, but then in 2015 moved to the much more impressive Centennial Park Stadium. As Baines, we've said his name an awful lot, or I actually apologize, it wasn't Baines, to an even greater point, but a safety conceded nevertheless, I believe. Was that David Lim, number 30? I'll have to take it one more gander at the replay there, if possible. Trying to make out the number mat of the guy back at the five yard line. Yeah, it was David Lynn. So, ugh. 
Definitely looks like our boy oh, Gagan no. Baines is, is out no. with that injury we saw at the end of the last drive there. And that'll be a tough blow for the GTA Grizzlies. He was definitely the shining star for them so far with a big leg kicking them out of trouble. And now you don't even have that. And now you don't even have it's that. It's like opening up a Swiss Army knife. There's no other tools and the blade is dull. What is this thing good for? 27 to 3. Late in the third quarter. London is starting to claw away from the Grizzlies. And uh, we'll see if the B-feeders can kind of keep the offensive momentum they had in the last drive going. Well, They're going to get a good field position here with the backed up kick from GTA. And I think the biggest factor in this game, yes, you have David Lim, who technically led the team in rushing coming in for the GTA Grizzlies with 120 yards and a touchdown on 26 carries. But where, oh, where is number 22, Brandon Owusu? 112 yards and two touchdowns on 19 carries last week in that 31-20 loss to the Quinty Skyhawks. As a result, was the OFC Offensive well Player of the Week. I don't know too many Offensive Players of the Week that are then absent the following week. And I mean literally absent. I don't mean statistically on the field. That wasn't an insult. I, I know that look. <laughs> this one goes off the fingertips of a beef eater, not once but twice. Butterfingers eventually picking it up is Keyshawn Cuff. Old Keyshawn Cuff out of Saunders Secondary School. A player that's been through our program with the Junior Mustangs. He's a big tough linebacker from the Sabres and he finally gets his hands on that and able to rumble forward for a good return. That's a good play from Keyshawn Cuff to keep his composure in that when that kick comes to his feet and gets the first down. To kind of go back to your point about the player for the GTA Grizzlies, it could be a situation like we talked about earlier where because of the COVID rules and the vaccine protocols that were put in place by the UFC. He's a player that just wasn't able to get eligible in the time frame put forward and, and it might affect the GTA roster. They might be in a situation where they had to scramble as the rules came on play. Players weren't available for whatever reason, whatever choices they've made. And I think a lot of teams are probably kind of regrouping after the announcement came out that those requirements are going to be in place. Holding on the last play will put this back a barn length. Looks like Around the 30-yard line is where this next play is going to start off. And if I'm not mistaken, that is not McCallum at the helm, Coach. And it's not Devin Smith. That looks like Brian Harkness, the Lucas Vikings graduate back in London. So you are right, Coach. It's Brian Harkness now at the helm for the home team. One of three quarterbacks we've seen in this game, but despite the name of the quarterback, the uh, plays don't seem to be changing very much. The quarterback hands the ball off to the rusher, oh, and LJ Dyer gets some down. damage done up the gut to the 40-yard line. 27-3, McCallum took a, you know, had an injury the last oh, couple drives ago, and he, he was definitely in some pain. Good Second chance down. to get Harkness some reps here, protect McCallum for the next week. Harkness is a player out of London, very smart, super smart quarterback. I've coached him in the past, awesome kid, uh, definitely has some experience, and he's a quarterback that, you know, he might be the guy in your future, so a good chance to get him in some game, get him some experience here, and keep McCallum healthy for the future. Dying seconds of the third quarter of action, three run the line for the beef feeders. It's Harkness stepping back, finding Dyer with the catch, stays on his feet, plows into a Grizzly, not one but two, and eventually smushed Harkness down to the turf. At the 47-yard line, good enough for the first down after picking up seven yards. Yeah, Dyer's a, a very talented player, both out of the backfield and as, as a receiver. And in the backfield as a running back, he's able to catch that, get it forward, and create a first down for London here as the quarter changes. First down, and that is the end of the third quarter. Well, it's funny you said it. The PA announcer has said it, but you know who hasn't said it yet? The official is telling the teams to switch fields. Looks like there might be one more play. Looks like you and the PA guy got a little ahead of yourself. Those weird Canadian clock rules that nobody really understands. Well, I love, you're a Western alum, you have a decimal clock at TD Stadium. And I remember one year, a kicker for the Laurier Golden Hawks completing a 20 plus point comeback in a Yates Cup and with 0.3 seconds, nailed it. You gotta have a talk with the clock operator in that situation. Like, <laughs> Where's the home field we're, advantage? We're in London, you know that, right? Like, your check is signed by Western, and you leave .3 seconds on the clock, somebody needs to work on their finger speed. I think that was the greatest, if not the biggest, comeback in U Sports history in a championship dance. Uh, London had a 20-plus, or Western, I should say, 
had a 20 plus lead. Harkness on a bit of a broken play, now trying to glue it back together is Tazzy Bang Bell. Bang Bell stumbles, but still manages to get about a yard or two. That easily could have gone backwards for five. What's interesting about that game, the Western game with, with uh, Laurier, the comeback. Michael Folds, the head coach of Laurier, a former Western QB. It started a chain reaction at Western that ultimately led to them winning the Vanier Cup the next year. And you'll recall in the playoffs the next year, they put 75 points up on Laurier and kind of like a, hey, we remember, we don't forget, so. Yeah, they, they hired some guy's brother. It's on the tongue, but I can't remember it. And then he went off to be the head coach of the Queens Gales. They were 1-0 to start the year. Congratulations to Coach Snyder. No, not Matt, your brother Steve. Yeah, they're 1-0. It looks like they were up today against Ottawa, so obviously they're having a great year, good start to the season. And Western had a great week, uh, one victory over McMaster, which is a tough Tough place to start the season against McMaster. They have a very talented team. You want to talk about getting Yates Cup revenge? They lost to them in the last Yates Cup dance. Yeah, Coach Coach Marshall definitely had that in the back of his mind, I think. And former Marauder himself, by the way. They had a strong they have a strong team so far. Looks like Western number one in the rankings this week. So uh, things are looking good for the Mustangs. Don't necessarily know how that works, though. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how the rankings work, but not uh, the defending U Sports champion, but yet one and zero. You're ranked number one. Well, um, I think LaValle's like had lost twice this year so far, which is, when was the last time LaValle lost two games in a season? I don't know. Great pass there from Harkness to Bang Bell out of the backfield Harkness for a first down. Really Bell liking what I see out of Harkness so far, coming into the game in relief of McCallum. Two for two to start the game. First day, showing the poise of a savvy vet. He had 44 yards and a touchdown on seven rushes the last time he saw the Grizzlies. The Tasmanian Devil really starting to rack up the yards here in the second half. I love it. Tazzy Bell is a player that, like I said again, you want to get the ball in his hands as much as you can. He makes good things happen. It's nice as a quarterback when you throw a five yard out, he turns into a 30 yard game. And going back to the youth sports scene, your heart has to go out to the Ottawa GGs who lost a fifth year student a couple weeks ago, tragically, uh, on a bus after completing their game. And you just don't ever want to hear things of that nature happening. As Harkness had to go back for the high snap and actually will be credited with the sack is Aaron Collins. Yeah, great play from Harkness to protect the football, keep possession on a bad snap, uh, take a bad situation, don't make it worse by trying to make a play. To speak to you, what your, your comments about the Ottawa situation, definitely unfortunate. You never want to see that happen to anybody let alone a young football player that had a lot of potential. Obviously, as a football community, I think we're all saddened by the loss, and our thoughts are with the Ottawa program and then the player and his family, and it looks like Ottawa's out there today battling, and uh, I know, know they'll be back. Coach, Bell, coach Belfort is a great coach, and they'll be back. But you know, not just the youth sports, but the entire football community is, is with the GGs. Oh yeah, a lot, of, a lot of outpouring of support for the GGs from all across. Canada and the United States. GTA bringing the pressure down and Harkness is getting Harkness sacked for a second really time. Miller time. Javar Miller in on the sack. GTA's getting some pressure. London as they start to bring Miller in some players off their bench to get really reps. You might start to see down. GTA have some success. Harkness did a good job protecting the ball. London will punt it away. Well, I mentioned Aaron Collins, AC, put Harkness on chill the last sack and now cleaning it all up again for a second dose is the teammate coming in on the tackle. So you're the GTA Grizzlies. Yeah, you are down by 24 points. And yeah, time is of the essence right now. Because let's face it, you need about four majors to get back into this game. However, your defense refuses to break here despite being down on the road. Here comes a pump block from GTA. Oh, they got a return on. Good kick from Stackhouse there towards the GTA bench. In fact, it's gonna take one bounce and go out right in front of the visitors. So at 12.45 remaining in this football game, it is the lone OFC game here on your Saturday. Tomorrow though, the St. Clair Fratman will be visiting the Quinty Skyhawks and that'll be a doozy. Yeah, you have the Fratman undefeated, number one in the OFC, which is the 2-0 record after their bye. They have the Quinty Skyhawks, a new franchise, coming off of their first ever franchise win against the GTA Grizzlies last week. Yeah, Quincy's a, we've talked, Quincy's a new program, uh, great head coach, and Coach Goldie, who's actually a, a Western alumni, leading the team down there. And we were talking about bus legs earlier with the GTA. Yeah, try going from London all the way to Quincy. Your legs are going to cramp up a little bit on that bus. It's a long bus ride for sure with all the restrictions in place. Well, and I hate to say this, once you get past Toronto, not necessarily the most scenic. Although, 
fall time, the foliage. What am I talking about? You got the lovely colors. Oh, it's a beautiful, beautiful fall day in Ontario. Well, this is a beautiful defensive play. They were trying to go to the bread and butter where the GTA Grizzlies and Jericho Dare, but two beef eaters came down the pipe, including Tyler Thompson in on the tackle, the linebacker. Big Tyler Thompson out of South Collegiate in London, the powerful linebacker, had a pretty serious knee injury in high school that he's bounced back from, Doesn't has never looked better. He's a ball hawk for sure, and uh, he's been one of the stronger players for London's defense so far this year. So a second and long play coming up here for Purvis, and to be honest with you, just the eye test, Purvis looks like a quarterback, tall, slender, has the general dynamic out there, and let's see if he can put something together on this crucial play. He'll take the snap and look to air this one out. It's a familiar target in William Paisley. Paisley stays on his feet for maybe a yard or two before going out of bounds. Coach, he's close to the first down marker. Yeah, this will be a good decision for GTA if they get this uh, spot third and short. Yeah, it looks like about third and a yard. If you're GTA, do you just go for it here? Given the field positioning, you don't want to risk it. I think at this point in the game, you, you're going to go for this. Third and a half a yard to go. Now remember, last time they needed a yard, they went to a QB sneak, but it wasn't Purvis. They switched Ryan Boyd in at the helm, number 11. So we'll see if Boyd goes back in or if it's Purvis. With that yard off the ball, a QB sneak's almost a gimme, although you're running into some big boys in the middle of that London defensive line. The battle of the trenches, it's not a QB sneak. I like the trickery. Ryan Boyd hands the ball off, and I think that's Andrew Batman. I mentioned Baines before. They have Bane and Batman, Batman on the same team. I think Robin was late for the bus today, so you missed it. <laughs> yeah, GTA went back to their double wing offense and runs the old wedge play. Coach Marcus from Old South Collegiate will love that if he's watching. But uh, they convert the first down and keep the drive alive. If you took 35 points as the over, you're hoping for a GTA score here <laughs> to uh, you know pay out on your ticket. Is that why your phone keeps rumbling? That's Is that your bookie? I don't uh, have a comment for that, <laughs> but I will say that I'm definitely looking for a GTA score in the last 10 minutes of this game here. Well, I'm sure they are too. As I mentioned before, only a rouge in week one, only a field goal in week two, but they had 20 points last week in the 31-20 loss. They'd like to get a major here, held to a field goal so far. So Purvis, play action, throws this one. It is in and out of the hands of Paisley. He really got popped on that play, coach. Toby Gaboni. Hopefully I'm going to get that name right eventually. And Gaboni really hammered him and the ball came out. Yeah, I'll tell you this about GTA. Just from watching them, you couldn't tell the score was 27-3. The effort has been there all game. They haven't quit. They're competitive. They're battling. Just haven't had the bounces this today, but definitely a team that wants to play. And you got to give them credit for showing up and Know, battling all through the game despite the score. Penalty will back up. Looks like uh, some kind of a holding penalty against GTA. Put him in a first and long. I would expect to see London dial up some pressure here. Coach Griffiths. See if they can get after the GTA quarterback. Beef Eaters looking strong after the bye week. Remember, it was two weeks ago when they lost by seven points in the dying seconds of play to the St. Clair Fratman on the road, 29 to 22. Beal hit McCraney with a 78 yard touchdown. And if you saw that play, coach, I'm sure you would have been screaming at the monitor as Purvis takes a huge lick to Paisley. Huge catch and it's a first down for the Grizzlies at the 45 and Purvis to his last credit, took a wallop to make that throw. Yeah, GT is definitely finding something in their offense here with this pass game. Um, they need one more receiver though. They need one William more Paisley seems to be the only one out there catching the ball in a blue uniform. I would like to have seen GTA play this game with the offensive philosophy that they've adapted in the second half from the start. If they came out throwing the ball early, versus playing that conservative double wing offense, would this have been a different contest? It really seemed like when Alex Purvis made that first attempt to throw and the wind caught it, making a bit of a dying quail, the coaching staff just went, eh, no, we're going to the ground game. But to your point, maybe they shouldn't have. Could have been a different ball game. So three weapons to the left side. They're gonna hand this one off. It's Jericho Dare. To be honest with you, we saw David Lim have a little success earlier. We've had a couple other weapons out of the backfield, but Jericho Dare has, for the most part, been stymied by this uh, B 
Beefeater's offense, specifically led by Jordan Fletcher, who, let's face it, doesn't have the team record four sacks that he had in week one here today, but he's always a factor on the D side of the ball. Yeah, Fletcher does his, does his job every play. He might not necessarily be creating pressure on the quarterback, but he's controlling his gaps and freeing up his linebackers to make tackles. Sometimes the best play a defensive lineman can make is the play you don't really notice because he allows other players to make their plays. You mentioned the beef feeders probably seeing the Fratman, if not once more, probably twice more after suffering that 29-22 loss. Well, you're right, coach. We're back on the air next Saturday afternoon, live here from Citywide Sports Park. It is the London Beef Feeders in a rematch against those St. Clair Fratman. That's all going down on Beast TV. That'll be a great game to watch. So far slated for a 5 p.m. kickoff, I, assuming that's if they get the wiring back into this place and we don't need another generator game. As Purvis was trying to find Paisley this time, I think just not enough on the pass. It's actually lucky that the beef eaters didn't sniff that out, brings up second and long. Yeah, I mean, if we have to play the game by candlelight, I'm sure the beef eaters will be game for it. I know any team with Coach Lake in the helm is gonna to wanna to play no matter what the conditions are. So. Good for London and the organization for kind of regrouping despite the circumstances, getting the game moved earlier so they can fit it in with the, and it turned out to be a beautiful day. Great sunlight, hey, good, great good weather. Good for our producer, Adam Melrose, to A, find a will and a way to get this broadcast done. I mean, you're talking about broadcasting a game in 1080p live across the entire earth on YouTube. You think you would need electrical wiring to do that. Nope, gas generator, fuel it up. I don't care if there's a background noise. Let's dig into some OFC action. Purvis, second and long, intercepted beef beaters. That's Tyler Thompson, double T on the INT. That was a situation where there was one guy being covered by three and Purvis tried to fit it in there and didn't work out well for him. Tyler Thompson was Johnny on the spot with the interception and letting him take over. Well, Up. William Paisley had all the receptions that the GTA have to their credit from Alex Purvis. You would think after, you know, only being able to utilize one particular weapon in the aerial assaults that the defense was eventually going to pick up on that trait. And unfortunately for the GTA Grizzlies, Double T, Tyler Thompson does just that here with, well, still seven plus <laughs> minutes left in this game. Anything can happen on your Saturday afternoon great situation for Harkness to come in the game and get some experience. I know uh, London is kind of working in some new players that they've picked up over the last couple weeks, so you'll see some of them in the game. And isn't that ironic, because 742 days ago, Jake Powell was the starting quarterback for the Beef Beaters. He was eventually relieved by Clark McCallum, who came into the game three of six passing, 42 yards, and picked up a touchdown in that 53-point win over the Grizzlies. I mentioned Bang Bell had a touchdown. Foster had a touchdown. And, you know, guys that played factors, even for the Grizzlies, and Baines had a field goal, which he repeated here today. And yet, today, McCallum's the starter. Got a little banged up there in the latter half of the second half and goes, well, we're going to go to the next guy up, and it's Brian Harkness. To your point, though, earlier, I really thought we'd see more Devin Smith. I'm not a, uh, uh, you know, no slouch on Harkness, the former Lucas Viking, but I thought... You know, we saw Smith early, we thought to see more of his uh, dine and dash offense. Yeah, Harkness is a younger player, has a lot of eligibility left. Good, A good uh, chance that you'll see Harkness maybe at the helm of the London Beef Feeders in the future because of his depth and his experience. Anytime you get some of your younger players in the games, as a program, it's always a benefit. You develop those guys, you reward them for coming to practice. You know, they're out there battling at practice every day just like the starters. They want to play as well, so. Harkness had the handoff here, coach, but the Grizzlies were able to, well, I was going to say claw their way through the offensive line, but I think I've already used that bear pun already. Uh, regardless, one of the three tacklers in on the running back appeared to get hurt, and not only was he trying to make the tackle, but then he had his own teammate and Keenan MacArthur on top of him, as you see it on the replay. GTA is you know, starting to feel the effects of their limited depth. They're banged up starting to, you know, you're starting to see a little bit of despair in their, in their body language. They should be proud of the effort that they brought today. They, they're going to come out on the short side of the score likely, but their effort was great. They had some good chances. They had opportunities. They just weren't able to capitalize. Hopefully they're able to regroup with the bye week coming up, bounce back. Yeah, unfortunately they look like they will be falling to 0-4 and, and still looking for that elusive first win of the season. As I mentioned though, this is a league that was or a team that was founded in this league in 2014. They've never had a winless season, despite never having a winning season. 
Their worst records were 1-7, which happened both in 2014, their first year in the league, and in 2017. And actually, back in 2014, they weren't even the worst team. Statistically, it was the Grand River Predators who also finished 1-7. and seven. That's a testament to the leadership of the program, keeping the players involved. You know, it's tough when you get down a couple wins early in the season to keep players involved and interested, but you got to keep them... You know, keep your spirits high. Everybody's working towards it. And if you can get that first win, it's funny how a lot of things will change with a victory. So, And ironically, they'll be chasing their first win against the same team. They get a bye week next week to recuperate from, well, I would imagine the ice bags needed on the bus leaving Citywide Sports Park here today. And then they'll host at Centennial Stadium, these London Bee Feeders. Now, the Bee Feeders, remember, are 1-1 one one on the road. They beat the Skyhawks, but they lost to the Fratman. Yeah, they definitely had some positives today. And we'll see if they have a, diff a little bit of a different story when they don't have to travel. They're able to call some reinforcement stuff because obviously going on the road is a little bit different in this league. You mentioned being on the road, maybe having a bit of a shorter bench, so A, having more personnel. But even to my point, being healthy, there's an injured DT GTA Grizzly, unfortunately, after that last tackle, still on the ground being attended to. Um, and then we think about the, the guy that's got the only six points against London in the last two contests, Baines, also appear to have a lower body injury and for a kicker that can't be good. That'll definitely be the loss for the GTA Grizzlies. I think we're all, I know I'm concerned with, with Bain's condition. I was a big fan of him so far today and hopefully he's able to bounce back because he's a big part of what GTA is trying to do. Well, without the effort of Baines, A, we're looking at a shutout in potentially both games, but you've actually mentioned maybe the more underlying factor in this contest, which has been his punting. I mean, he really was able to hold the chess mark chess match for the most part in the field positioning game against the beef eaters. Punting is one of those positions in Canadian football that is so underrated. It's not really something that a lot of people look at, but it is so important to have a great punter. And if you don't have a great punter in Canadian football, it becomes very evident very quickly. And I believe it was Ethan Moretti who appears to be okay, got to the sidelines on his own accord, and outside of the Baines injury, We've actually seen the remainder of the quote-unquote injured players return to action eventually. Second and long here for the Bee Feeders, taking the snap. And I'm wondering at this point if you put a Quinton Jurgens or a Matt Koski in there. As Harkness throws this one deep. And we're going to say incomplete. I thought there for a second it might have been an interception for the Grizzlies. Oh, good play from the defensive back there. It shows the Grizzlies aren't quitting. They're still battling despite the score, which is a positive sign for them. They'll regroup on the bye week next week and then hopefully, you know, be back for, to face London at home in two weeks and, you know, everybody will get rested. They'll be able to get some players back from injury and hopefully our boy Baines is back. And The defender, by the way, would have had to do his best Oklahoma Sooners impersonation on that attempted INT, if you know what I'm referring to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, probably the catch of the CFB season and it wasn't oh, done by an offensive player. Insane, insane. <laughs> So, good, good games tonight on college football if you're a fan. Uh, that phone's ringing, man. We got a nice midnight Hawaii kickoff. Nothing like watching football from the island. Are they still the Rainbow Warriors as Stackhouse this time hangs on to it? And coach, to your point last time, was looking for real estate to kick it. Maybe he didn't find it here. It's a turnover on downs. It looks like GTA ball at the beat beaters 50. Yeah, that was a short snap. I don't know if that was a call fake or that was just a punter going, but he wasn't able to get there. And this will give GTA a chance to start with a short field. Let's see if they can get on the board. And How huge would a major be? Again, I keep repeating it. I know Grizzly fans are probably hating me at this point. Only a rouge and a 63 to one loss in week one against the Fratman. Only a field goal and a 41 to three loss against the Hamilton Hurricanes. You finally got the offense awoken, but unfortunately do a special teams player and kicker Connor Rafferty of the Skyhawks and his five field goals. You fell short last week in a 31 20 loss here. Again, stymie to just the Baines field goal Man, oh man, how sweet would a major be? Well, it'd definitely be good for the confidence. It'd also be good for anybody that bet the over. We'll <laughs> you and that over. <laughs> Isn't it an interesting play? Developed out of the backup quarterback in Ryan Boyd. He hands it off and trying to make something out of nothing is Elio Almeida. I believe that's one of the first times we've seen him carry the rock this time. 
I'm a little, I don't know if confused is the word, but I'm a little uh, perplexed, perplexed of why GTA is going back to their double wing offense after having so much success with their conservative offense, especially with backup quarterback in the game, um, Ryan Boyd, giving him a chance to throw and let's see what they can do. They, ha they have had moments in the game where they've moved the ball with some consistency, just not able to capitalize on it. And, um, but they did pick up three yards. Boyd goes back in on the helm, actually moving off the line from the left side to the right side. Another crafty play, Matt. This time done through David Lim. And they're gonna get close to the first down marker. I believe they have it. They'll definitely go for it here in this situation based on the score and tempo of the game. You think you're you're actually right, they are shy. Just the GTA luck in this game by about a yard and a half. And to your point, they should probably go for it. A little too short to sneak, in my opinion. So we'll see if they run some kind of an off-tackle play there. Michael Might be. Gill, sorry to interrupt, appears to be on a knee right now for the beef eaters. And the wheel is okay. Actually, I mean, maybe my memory doesn't serve me correct. I think this is the first beef eater that's been attended to by the training staff here today. Yeah, they've had uh, pretty good success. when Callum went down early in the third quarter with the injury, so he was... He was banged up, but... Uh, yeah, that proves my point wrong. Yeah, so far so good for London, <laughs> knock on wood. But uh, we'll see what the GTA goes with here. Might be a situation where you can run that little counter crisscross they ran early in the first half where they hand off to the wing and then he hands off to the other wing and see if you catch London in some kind of a run pressure here. Although you remember the last time they tried that, it looked like Jordan Fletcher got not one, but two tackles on the play as he Jordan broke it up Fletcher, in the backfield. Jordan Fletcher's a man. He's playing big boy football out here. And you mentioned it in the first half. I mean, this is a guy who played American football throughout his, you know, high school days and his kid days, and now he's transitioned in the mature age that he's at into the Canadian game almost flawless. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, he's a player that's up here trying to gain some experience, hoping for an opportunity in the CFL. Uh, shows that the league's a viable op option for players that want to continue to play high level football, but maybe university for whatever reason isn't in their, isn't in their plans. Um, some players choose to work after high school or you know go to college and take programming like that and that's awesome and they want to still continue to play and that's what this league provides an opportunity for those type of players to continue to play at a high level have an avenue to go to the CFL if their skill level is obviously appropriate enough um, without having the commitment of playing university football so it's a great league and happy to be here today Right behind the line of center is Boyd. Boyd's going to try and go for a QB sneak. He was successful earlier in the game, Coach. Now, if you mark his forward progression, I think he's close. But if you mark where he ended up, he didn't get it. We'll see. This. It's all going to come down to the spot of uh, the, the uh, umpire or the line judge in the pile. We'll see it. To me, it didn't look like they got the surge. But we'll see how the spot looks. Might be short based on what I'm seeing so far. They gotta make it to the 40 yard line. I think the ball is placed right on the 40, so it will be decided by the nose of the pigskin. They're gonna measure. And now we'll see the real heroes of today's game, the Chains crew coming in. For the first time here today at Citywide Sports Park. And again, remember at kickoff it was 15 degrees. We had an 80% chance of rain coming into this game, Matt, and 17 kilometer an hour winds coming from the west. We got the rain all right. It just poured down on our producer, Adam Melrose, and the crew while they were actually setting up the broadcast booth here from Citywide Sports Park. But maybe just the uh, luck of the Irish, for better lack of a word, we somehow, some way, have a sunny, bright day here on your Saturday afternoon. Perfect football weather. Big stop from London there on third down. They'll take the ball over. And uh, GTA unable to convert on that third down and one and a half. They say it's a game of inches, but man, oh man, GTA has just been on the wrong side of that equation far too often here today. The score's 27-3, but from what I've seen out of GTA, they're they're so close to having a competent competitive offensive defense. They're just, for whatever reason, not able to connect on some passes. They're missing one key block on their runs, but there's a lot of positives, positives there for, from what I'm seeing. They just need to kind of fine tune everything and, and tighten up the nuts and bolts of their offensive defense. We've repetitively mentioned Brandon Owusu, who's the OFC Offensive Player of the Week with 112 yards and two touchdowns on 19 carries for the Grizzlies last week. Absent in this game here today. They get the bye, then they go back at the beef beaters as it is London going through Taz Van Bell on a run up to the 45 yard line. But yeah, going back to the Grizzlies, as I mentioned, 
What exactly are you looking at in the X's and O's knowing that let's say somehow, some way they get a Brandon Owusu back two weeks from now when they visit these, or I should say host these beef eaters at Centennial Stadium. Do you like how those chances would fare adding an extra weapon to their tool belt? Yeah, we talked about how when they went to their more conventional offense, they, they definitely looked more comfortable and they were able to string together some first downs. They seem pretty dependent on the connection between the quarterback Purvis and receiver Paisley. If you can add in a running back or another offensive threat, just kind of takes a little bit of the pressure off of Paisley to convert all the time and might balance the offense out a little bit more. So we'll see what happens. We've got a new London quarterback in now. Ethan Reed. So it's a corpocopia of quarterbacks for Gavin Lake. He completes the pass. And right at the 55-yard line, it'll be Wolf Sim. Love the name with a first down for the home crew. Yeah, Coach Lake rewarding some of his uh, you know players that come to practice every day and, and work hard and might not get as many in-game opportunities as other players. So he's going deep to the bench and making sure that all of, all of his guys that are there every night are getting rewarded with a little bit of game action. If there's one slap, one slap, I can give a legend like Greg Marshall is I always know they like one or two quarterbacks, Matt. He's got nine on the bench, Matt. Give a couple kids a break. Especially when you're up 58 nothing on a team like Acadia or something like that. You know what I'm talking about, Matt. You can say something, but you're not. <laughs> this one's a dash to the right side. Just going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And then the first down salute. Howl at the moon, it's Wolf Sim again. Is that is that a dose of Sim being hyped up or the Grizzly sort of just giving up at this point? Because it didn't seem to be much gusto in those navy blue uniforms on that last play. I think if you look at GTA, they have a shorter bench. They probably don't have as many players to be able to sub in in this situation. London is obviously going to their bench getting guys in the game who might not get to play as much so they're excited for their opportunity. They want to show the coaches like, hey, I should be playing more. So they're going to take advantage and when they make a big play, they want to celebrate because this is their opportunity now. So you're definitely, you might see some different kind of compete levels between the two teams at this point. We've surpassed the Canadian three minute warning, quickly approaching the American two minute warning. This is a dose of dire but not really anything gained. In fact, a yard lost by the Beef Eaters. He's got Dyer in the backfield with uh, Dante McPhail at a Saunders secondary in at fullback there, who is lead blocking for him. So another young player be the future for the London Beef Eaters getting in the game. Back to your point though of Gavin Lake and the coaching staff of the Beef Eaters. I love this. They're giving every kid a break and every kid a shot. And like I said, I've seen a lot of predominant programs that just refuse for whatever, if it's a culture thing or just the way they do business. They'll never give the third or fourth string kid a shot. It is it is a little different when there's when it's your job. When you're getting paid to coach football and your livelihood kinda of depends on that. It's uh And it's, I get that. You get a different mentality than been I'm saying specifically there have been opportunities with 30, 40, heck, 50 point leads. The other the other issue at, at the OUA level is they are limited with how many players they can dress. Well, eligibility, right, that's right. Right here, like they can dress anybody. Up there, it's only 47, so you might only dress, for example, two quarterbacks. You get up 50 nothing, and your second quarterback's really good, but you don't have a third quarterback to play because you're limited to how many players you can dress. That's one of the things that they've talked about at the coaches' meetings, I know, is like, if you expand the, the game day rosters, you might be able to give opportunities in those blowouts to some of your younger players to gain experience. But for whatever reason, they've just decided not to go that route. Oh, I remember the days when the Beef Eaters and the Mustangs had a crafty relationship when it came to player eligibility and personnel. LJ Dyer, by the way, just caught that pass from Ethan Reed. Stumbled out of the gate, though, and it brings up a third and long situation here. So Stackhouse from back around the 53-yard line. Looks like it'll be one last boot on your Saturday afternoon. So once again, I want to thank everybody joining us here live on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Matt Schneider loves you, so love him too. And for the rest of the crew, including Alex Schleihoff, Camden Mauros, Adam Mauros, I'm Johnny Urban. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts as picking this one off the lawn at Stackhouse and then booting it towards the end zone. Off a of one hop, he touched that ball this time. He can't say otherwise. And then he actually kicked it out of bounds. A little fumble ruski action, if you will, to the far sidelines. <laughs> shaking your head. A little bit of a sloppy return there from GTA. A little bit. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, they, they come he, out with possession. He, he, he got a palm on it, a forearm on it, a knee on it, a hip on it, but I don't think it ever went in his hands. Yeah, that was, that was challenging for them. Challenging for GTA, just trying to get out of this game at the last. 
So beef eaters want us to give shoutouts. You know what? If they ask, we'll oblige. Apparently, there's some fans joining us from the friendly province of Manitoba. Thanks for joining us here on your Saturday afternoon, a little earlier where you are. And oh yeah, they get the enjoyment of another three Canada West games in the CGFL schedule here on your Saturday. This being the lone OFC game. And as I mentioned, more OFC action tomorrow as the Fratman, in my opinion, make the longest trip possible in the OFC going from the Windsor area to the Quinty Skyhawks nation out east at Loyalist College. That'll take place with a 4 p.m. kickoff tomorrow. Our Manitoba fans getting ready for a big Bombers game this week and uh, obviously the Jets season starting soon. Should be a good year for Manitoba sports fans. I've never been, but I heard it's lovely. Uh, my, my Jets, that's been my team since I was a kid. Heartbreak when they went to Arizona and heartbreak every time they make the first round of the playoffs lately. <laughs> Although I will say that healthy run against Vegas, you just saw it coming at the Western Conference Finals. The Predators beat them up over those seven games. You can see it, it was written on the walls. Well, you're a Reds fan, aren't you? Are you a Reds fan? I, I'm a Joey Votto Joey fan. Joey Votto. And to your Reds fan credit, you guys are slipping out of the hunt oh, in a hurry. What's going on? Just blowing it. The, the nicest thing about being a Reds fan, I might be the only Cincinnati Reds fan I've ever met. The best thing about being a Reds fan is you only have to watch baseball until June because then they're 22 <laughs> games out. You got the whole rest of your summer. Do whatever you want. This year, they're a little bit more competitive. You get your hopes up, and then they just disappoint you right at the end. So. Oh, man, and especially for the Etobicoke native, tying in with the GTA Grizzlies oh, yeah. who play out of Etobicoke, Joey Votto. I mean, who, who wants to watch playoff baseball anyway, right? Uh, I'd like to see some with Canadian content added into it. Although... There's another Canadian that plays on the St. Louis Cardinals in O'Neill trying to get his team into the postseason. I don't think Soroka will be available for the Braves even if they make the playoffs this year with his injuries. I miss the days of seeing guys like Morno and Walker rock the ball in the postseason. Yeah, there's definitely been a good history of Canadian ball players in the majors. Otto right now seems to be like the main guy if you're a Canadian baseball fan. He will eventually join Fergie Jenkins and Larry Walker, the only two Canadians in the Baseball Hall of Fame of Cooperstown, inevitably, especially after picking up 2,000 hit hits this year there, Matt. As this is a pitch to the right side, it's another dose of what we saw earlier in this game and David Lim, Lim put into the sea of red, if you will, in beef eater uniforms. Yeah, I think at this point, GTA is just Happy to get out of this game, letting the clock run with a running play. Approaching the seeing, final minute here on your Saturday afternoon. Oh, seeing a flag after the play, if, if I saw it correctly, maybe Send not. I think both teams just Although, counting down the seconds until this game is over. You know, Matt, when you see something like a thousand times over, your mind plays tricks on you. You might start seeing it there when it's not. I still have, and that would be the fair assessment of penalty flags at Citywide Sports Park. Well, no comment about the refs. <laughs> I keep trying to drag you into the mud and you won't get dirty with me, Matt. Oh. As this is a fumble! Oh, he thought about the end zone before picking up the ball. Fumble. Skating fumble. right fumble. over it was Dylan Soares. He soared over the pigskin when he could have had the fumble reception. Yeah, GTA is, unfortunately. That really would have been a nail in the coffin if Soares had picked up that ball and had nothing but 30 yards of real estate in front of him to pay her. Yeah, unfortunately, GTA, they, they had their chances in this game. Unable to capitalize. They'll fall to the London Beef Eaters today. Well, think about it. After the first quarter, it was just 10 0. They conceded a rouge. They conceded a safety. They only gave up the Mitch Smets touchdown, which, let's face it, McCalum was in the red zone, breathing down their neck for a short TD reception. In the second quarter, though, that's when you really felt, especially after that big turnover deep in Grizzlies territory, that things were starting to fall off the table a little bit for them as. Eventually, with 9.27 left in the second quarter, a QB sneak from McCalum would increase the lead. Baines eventually got the goose egg off the board with a field goal before halftime. But again, it's been all beef beaters here in the second half with a Connor Depot test a 27-yard touchdown catch and another safety to bring us to 27-3. This one is blocked! Touchdown, beef beaters! You gotta feel... For the GTA Grizzlies, Gemi Kazadi, his second punt block return touchdown of the season. We're his good luck chart. He had one in the opening game we broadcast against the Hamilton Hurricanes, but I almost, you know, interrupted my main point, which Baines hadn't been blocked all game. The stud punter and kicker who got the lone field goal in this contest isn't available because of an injury. What happens? 
boom goes the dynamite, Matt. After, you know, week one, block punt, week two, block punt, week three, block punt, we have a block punt here in week five of action after the bye week for the Beef Eaters. Just a matter of, not a matter of if, but when London would get to that punter. There's a penalty, so that'll actually uh, oh, no. wipe out the play, but they, they have been pressuring the punter all game. They're just overwhelming with their speed off the edge. Say it, forget it, write it, regret it. And I shouldn't have sent that email to my ex. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> you wanted the, the beef eaters to end this game on a high note. They still can, mind you, as the reception is taken from around the 50-yard line. Heading up the field is Jared Hicks. Hicks will be stymied at the 55. Yeah, really and with enough time left for two knees and a final whistle, this should be, yeah. should be the end of the game for the line of beef eaters here. We'll see if the beef eaters quarterback comes out and put the knee down to finish it. So once again for the GTA Grizzlies, they get to recoup, rest, and well, re-strategize against the same team. They'll have a bye week next week, and then they will host these London Beef Beaters as the Beef Beaters will head to Centennial Stadium on October 10th. But the Beef Beaters have another game in between those two dates, and that's against the St. Clair Fratman, a team that beat them 29-22 two weeks ago with 36 seconds left in the fourth quarter in a game that was tied 22 all. They get a chance at revenge live on Beast TV next Saturday, October 2nd. So instead of victory formation, we get another offensive play through LJ Dyer to the 50 yard line. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. Simple run up the middle. Lennon's trying to just get reps to some of the players that haven't played so much this year. And Dyer is able to get a first down. And I expect to see the clock run down to zero and Lennon take a knee to finish the game. There's no decimal clock, is there, Matt? No, looks okay. like, yeah, they're in a kneel down formation and uh, Reed will let the clock go to zero and then take a knee and that'll be all she wrote for the GTA Grizzlies. 742 days after Reed losing 56 to three at TD Reed Stadium, Reed the GTA the Grizzlies Reed lose again to the, to the London Bee Beaters. But this time, Matt, the score far more respectable, 27 to three. And ironically, the GTA player of the game last game against these Bee Beaters is the same guy this game. Gagan Baines with the lone field goal to break up the goose egg. Again, despite not having a win this season, the Grizzlies have never been shut out this season. And despite never having a winning season in their history, they have yet to have a winless season, despite the fact that now they're 0-4. Yeah, GTA, a lot of positives there. Uh, they just have to find a way to continue to get drives, get first downs. The penalties really affected them. A couple turnovers late. I thought Purvis played well at quarterback considering the circumstances. Uh, when they went to their more conventional offense in the second quarter, they were able to move the ball a little bit. And Normally you have the greatest line in all of sports lining up, but because of the pandemic, the teams just sort of wave each other adieu after a great OFC contest. 30 points put on the board. They didn't get your over there, Matt, well, despite the fact that they had a chance with that block punt. Well, it is a 27-3 final for the London Beef Beaters. We'll be back next week on Beefs TV when they take on the St. Clair Fratman. For Matt Schneider, Camden Melrose, Alex Schleihoff, and Adam Melrose, I'm Johnny Yu. We bid you adieu from Citywide Sports Park.